Uh, welcome to this event where we have all UKZN uh, colleagues and students and counselors and other community engagement activists from different parts of KZN. The title of today's uh, talk is Empowering Counselors on Heritage Development and Maintenance. We hoping after today's event, um, colleagues and students and other activists will all be sensitized to do a little more for the community and always know that nothing is ever too little for a person in need. So I'm gonna call upon uh, Professor Hiralal, who is a senior professor in the history department, social sciences, to formally welcome us to this event. Professor Hiralal. Yes, um, good morning all. Thank you, uh, program director. Uh, a very warm and special welcome to all of you, in particular um, to our program director, our DVC, um, Prof. Nunchlanshim Kise, Dr. Masondo, our participants, our counselors, and facilitators, all our participants in today's program, as well as our audience, those who are virtual and joining, uh, and those present. Um, Thank you for being part of this colloquium and all protocols observed. So before I start, I would just also like to express my gratitude to all those who sincerely contributed to this event to make it a success. And this wouldn't have been possible without the support of each and every one present here. And a special thanks to our Dean, Prof. Ojong, our DVC, Professor Nkise, Dr. Masondo, our counselors, our participants, facilitators, our audience, the, the UKZN PR team, in particular, Mrs. Melissa Mangru and the UKZN technical team. So I'd like to extend a very warm welcome and, and on behalf of our Dean, Professor Ojong, I would also like to extend um, a very, very warm welcome to one and all on this to this morning's colloquium. Unfortunately, the Dean is un, 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 unable to attend this function and has asked me to say a few words on her behalf. So the main focus then of the School of Social Sciences is to have a curriculum that is engaged with scholarship, one that is engaged with the community in a fit for purpose for both scholarship and employers. We strategically involve all our stakeholders in the design and the execution of our curriculum. We focus on what the industry needs and to ensure that we produce students who are empowered with the necessary skills for the development um, of our country. This curriculum is significant and it is important because it provides a space and a platform for higher education to play an important role in community engagement. The School of Social Sciences is committed to working with communities to engage in constructive dialogue, to work towards solutions and to enhance community development and heritage. This colloquium will not only enhance collective initiatives and partnerships, but also shift community engagement, histories and heritage from the margins to the center of our society. Today's program is very impressive with speakers engaging in diverse and varied topics, contextualizing community engagement, highlighting the role of youths and their aspirations, problematizing community participation and sharing success stories. I do hope that at the end of today's program, we can find diverse ways to interact and sustain community engagement ties. There is no doubt that our communities can play a pivotal role 
in knowledge production and knowledge development. We at high institutions are keen and ready to work together as a collective, as equal partners in meeting the development of the economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof, for the warm welcome. Uh, now I'll call upon uh, Dr. Masondo. She is um, a lecturer in the tourism department and a cluster leader of the culture cluster. And she's also a chairperson of the committee, community engagement that is uh, in charge of this event today. Dr. Masondo, please come on stage. Greetings, everyone. Dumelang Sanbonani. I think even Dakwa or Dima Cheroni, Dima Tequani, Emolueni, even those who are joining us online. Greetings all over South Africa. Uh, I know we have sent uh, the invite throughout the country, and we are joined by people from all over the shore. Uh, this morning, I just want to say um, thank you for the fact that today we are assembled to focus on an important journey, a journey that is focused on what we are supposed to focus on as a as a community, because I believe that being a human being, it is about serving one another. So this journey of community engagement, it is about serving one another. For me, the issue of community engagement, it is about who we are. It is about what we are supposed to do. So today, the reason why we are here is the fact that um, I want to thank uh, Prof. Jong for the fact that um, I think it was November when this um, portfolio was vacant, uh, she asked me to come and act and um, it will be ending soon. And what came to mind is that uh, I had to construct a, a strategic plan. And part of the events, I'm a person who believes that it is important to strategize. So I came up with a vision and a mission and I submitted. And part of my mission, I even uh, shared with other, the Eteguini municipality. And part of the mission was uh, this uh, colloquium that we have today. And the colloquium that we have today, basically, it is about ensuring that as higher education, we give back to our communities. Because normally, as higher education, when we are engaged in our research, we go to communities. My husband always say, uh, we use our communities as laboratories. And I will say, oh, that is so great. And I started digesting that. And I said, mm, that is true. So we use them as like laboratories, but we forget to go back and test the theories. So community engagement as scholars requires us to go back to the communities and give back what we have uh, found out and make it a point that we practicalize whatever we have found out. So today, it is uh, not even the beginning, but it's part of the journey of giving back 
to our communities. That is why we have invited the counselors. We have invited even higher education. Different higher education institutions have joined us. Uh, different counselors have joined us. Uh, yesterday I was on the radio. I was very excited when they called me and they were so excited. Thank you, Highway Radio. And they said, this is very impactful. And what I can say is that this journey requires us as a higher education. I'm not talking about UKZ and only because we have a powerful university here in KZN and it is MUT. We are going to honor them. They are our best higher education ed a university that is excelling in community engagement. You'll understand why this university has been chosen. So it is a journey that we have to make it a point that along the way, when it comes to community engagement, this journey requires us to meet, to, to refuel one another. It requires workshops because as higher education, today, counselors, we are saying to you as higher education in all provinces, go to different universities, technicons, uh, colleges around you. They are open for you to engage with them. They can assist with counseling. They can assist with different strategies on how to develop the communities. Because our problems is that we focus more on burdening a government of which a lot of solutions comes from our brothers and sisters and people who are in our communities. And they are also among those who are in higher education. So that is why this colloquium uh, was established. And it is also established government to say to you, it is very important that you also plow your money in higher education. Because higher education is here to support you, government. We are here to support you. This colloquium was also, you know, uh, 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 organized to show honor earth that when you plow your money, you are plowing it in the right place. You will hear honor earth that we have different uh, uh, academics that you have supported who are doing excellent work. So, um, government us as the reps of the government, we are here to salute you. We are here to say government, we are here as higher education to work with you. We are here to say even to communities, we are here as higher education. We are not just white elephant that you know from the past. We are here to serve. We thank you and we hope that you will enjoy this day. And I want to thank the committee that I work with. I have our Prof Hiralal, I have Dr. Geraldine, Dr. Gumede, Dr. Mabui, I have also Ovunda, Odinte, or Balu, you know, and the, a lot of students around here. I want to say thank you very much for when I started dreaming, you were there to support. And I shared the, 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 the dreams and you supported and we organized all these events together. Today, I just want to say thank you for ensuring that, you know, we are starting a, a journey and we are also introducing, because as we have organized this colloquium, it's not about UKZN, it is about all higher education institutions that are in the whole world to say to everyone in the whole world, higher education institution, is here to serve the community. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you very much, Dr. Masondo. Uh, in order for institutions of higher learning and counselors to know what uh, students want, what uh, the community needs, we have invited two people, one from the elderly community and one is a youth representative. They'll be able to tell us what exactly does the community want, what is there, what can be improved and what, can, what should be left as is. I'm honored to introduce to you the first elderly member, 
of the community, Dr. Zinam Shope. She's joining us online. She's a South African anti-apartheid activist. She's an actress, a storyteller, a poet, playwright, director, and an author. This lady has made tremendous contribution towards encouraging South African children to read. Dr. Mshope, please join us. Sorry, I don't see Dr. Mshope online. And uh, I'm gonna ask Ndogo Zovundla in the meantime to come on stage and tell us what are the youth's aspirations. Ndogo Zovundla. Ndogo Zovundla is a student in the School of Social Sciences. And she is, he is also a member of the community engagement team. Thank you. Uh, program director. Uh, Prof. Ojong. Uh, Mama, Dogotel Masonda, Mama Witu. Eh, Bona Bongo Solas of a corner, Bona Bongo Dogotel of a corner, Eh, Wana Wanka Macancela corner, Professor Mood DVC for College of AES, and now Wanka protocols are observed in this room. I greet you all. Eh, the stage is here seen. And 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 I'm for no tamba man as yes in Dangambella go to again. Gizozama Ogo respond into the question. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Douglas O'Howard, Obabagandu Zembi Vundla, Ngenza E Masters of Social Science, uh Anthropology under the supervision of Utogotela Omakakash, Dr. Zont, Nangya Lapaya. And mine is simple, it's just to respond on the post topic which says council is uh, our hope as the youth for viable communities and this is how we propose how they can function effectively with communities to be honest i don't think i would be doing much of the justice if i can directly respond into our councils instead it better to look back from what are the local government's critical development imperatives according to a white paper a uh, published on 1998. In the local governments, we will see it in your map and our councillors are me one as like one. Actually, there are four those critical development imperatives. The local governments there. So, responsible for maximization of a social, a social and economic growth, the integration and the coordination, a democratization and of development, based on leadership and the learning. So when we speak of social development, Kuma local government, so whenever like we speak of the local government, school Magabumaspala, and Amubaspala for sure means we are councillors and our councillors and everything. So when we speak of social development over there, See, come up with the provision of like the basic needs. It can be in the issue of okay, see, issue of a man, the issue of but do, do, do those basic needs was about because you can understand that's a con. But now the issue are we having our counselors being effective when it comes to those things? The answer can be yes, and the answer can be no. If the answer is yes, that means like we are here about the services like they're giving us as the community. But the answer, if it is the answer, if the answer is no, that means like there is a problem. And if you can inking a book, nothing can I can. Inking a color whenever like we are 
manifest doing our manifest is like whenever like we are heading for our elections wait when like all the organizations that like are contesting for our elections they will have like that 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 centralized manifestos the manifestos that like are coming from the national levels in which like sometimes they end up like neglecting our issues that like the people are having in their wards what does that mean let's just say like party a you will say for this term, our major objective is to achieve the same as, as, as like the organization is like, we want to provide a shelter and housing for Abantu. We want to provide them schools. We want to provide Mkwak for Abantu. And you will find it like, where like I do have roads, I do have those shelters, I do have water. But the only problem like I'm facing is the issue that seems of like the, the, the illegal like, the immigrants, or is the issue of like or, or insecurity? Is the issue of like the, the, those other issues that like are not like the major objectives of like the party itself? So you will find that like even no matter that party A is a winner, come elections wait. Their strategies like will be more based on what like they have said in their manifestos. Ogusu which are not included according to their names in their words, they are not included in that side. So where is the problem there? The problem is that like, we just thought we thinking as it was a Kamuka Pezul, Sako, so we have been able to link in the on a banana of pants, so what are we saying is that like, we want our councillors, we want our municipalities to draft their manifestos based on what we need as human down there. And in order for you to do that, you need to be with people each and every time. We're in democracy, it's a government for people, by the people, for the people. So whenever like we say that, what do we mean? You cannot just go there and say like, I'm representing on those of Unla, but you don't know on those of Unla. Automatically, what you will do, you will give on those of Unla, you will give on those of So what we are proposing as a youth, we say, as our leaders are coming from our communities, we understand like you have been deployed by the political organization up there. But those people who are up there, they don't know how are our conditions down here. Come to us, live with us, hear us, then strategize from what we are. Then the part, the second part, we are speaking about the, the, the integration and the coordination of the local governments. So what, 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 what do we say about this one? We say those people who are occupying those positions in our local governments, they, have, they, they need to have the ability to, 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 to provide leadership in integration, integration of all sectors that can push the development of the societies forward. But the problem is, we all know what in order for one to be a counselor, there is no specific qualification in a university to do that thing. It's just that like, there is the only requirement that like, you need in order for you to be the inside. So after so for you, are you well equipped strategies that like will give you to be in a better position as the leader to integrate all the resources that like are needed in the society so that like you can push those people. If you are not, what is needed for you in order for you to be equipped for that kind of task? So now we go back and say, usually after my elections, after strategic planning for a weekend, for a week and everything. Is those strategic planning are enough for you to call yourself as if like, I'm well equipped for me with the second I was a strategizer for the whole term of five years? Or like, are we having the counselors that are going just there to take selfies? So like, back to us, Yakuba, Sumbu, and then Abandu, Basafis, and then Zetu. So now, that's where like, we call the institutions, like this one, as a girl. Why don't the institutions come and help the municipalities with some sort of like the three months courses and everything where like they will teach people this is how you're supposed to be doing your things strategically. And then those kind of courses are basically in a good power prepare the office, but they will give them even the some sort of the certification that will be used after the term of office. Maybe they will come back and be the advisors into the new council or they will come and continue to say again if we can if not so 
So we need the institutions. If we are speaking of KZN, we have OUKZN, we have Ungoye, we have DUT, we have MUT. We need these institutions to come into, into, into a play and equip those people to become the better leaders so that like, they can be able to integrate Elon Duzan. Uh, I'm a resources so that like, they can move. Number three, democratization of development. In most of the time, we always like cry, once we say we can't say that in Ghana we always on gain as those events are like Iana, Amans, it's Uncle Amans is a part of the group, um, classes are part of the because we won't be cancel. I'm not saying we're in the end of the but it's on the escalation as we are There's so much corruption when it comes to in the local governance and everything. So, yin in the dollar leon. In the dollar leon is the inherited system that like was not designed for us. A system is inherited, if you can go back to the history of in the Bayama, local governance, all of those things, you will be told to go to like there were times in South Africa when like they were suspended. And then back in the Babu Yiswa, but Mabibu Yiswa, there was this thing which is called by a group plan X, if I'm not so mistaken, where like Aban Babushwan is according to the races and everything. And all of the black people, like they were moved in the way, a cliche zebra like a macro sectors for the economic growth and everything. But we said with Kalin, then Gabakon administration, a number two, a Kamuka for Abandu, about Indians and Kalat, then the Subakon Yama whites. And the kinds of the administrations, like they were there, the administration, like a Pegalin, that was the Mahwites when it comes to the issue of local governance. Those people, like they were well equipped, the Guti, how are they going to mobilize the resources so that like, they can benefit their communities? Similar thing with like the Indians now, they were told the similar thing. And then like the map blacks now corner and the understand now corner, they were told the similar thing. But the issue is that like they were operating in different places with different donors and sectors like they can mobilize more resources like they can grow their communities. Ying Aku like you'll find that like we have the, di the difference between in the ways I occupy my whites in the first, in the ways I occupy my Indians, in the ways I occupy my pets, when, uh, my blacks, when it comes to the issue of development even now. So when ACB we see where, in, in, in the transition period from 1993 up until 1998, they were told that like, now we can go back into the local governance and everything and sit down and see for it and then in. But they were not told, which, how are you going to make sure that like you cover the standard? This is looking at this as part of the history. So, in a Koka Bantu can check a man, you may told which is on getting a new council and is on getting a new school still. Also, from Chata Wanka Mari, so it could benefit a Bantu back, and go back a yazi in to. Is the was one parameter and the other side. So what do we need to what do we need to do in, in order for us to fix that thing? We have to go back and say, Umas Palo Aband, Ama Cancela Kamge Bandwin, Ama Cancela, whenever like they have to do things, they have to go to people, they have to lead people in everything. You don't lead people by saying that like I'm just a lead. But when it comes to which we have to distribute. And the same way, we deliver. Abantu ba kabali tayo, abai so lengi telefa na yo. And ababe ne say, actually ne bayifuna ganja ni into zao, cause into ya bungati. Then we talk issue of leadership and learning. The issue of leadership is simple. Yes, I do lead, but I'm leading kwa mizende ngi na ngondo. Ngi lita bantu 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 bangai. And then I'm a council as way to kufanya la fundi some leadership skill. How do you deal with the communities? In accountable to our people. And then, like we are in this crisis, like we are, when like we say that development is just steady, I harm because it because of like the people that's spending as a position in the other side by Bona Bengo Messiah, Benga Funu, we are basically that team, really telling you that. Whenever like over telling me, I'm better with power. That means like whatever that comes with power supposed to come from me, the person who like voted you. I'm your leader. Yes, you are. But low position in the way niggas we mean. And then Jimon Gunning is a low position in the way niggas are good time, you're the man. But in niggas and good see, Yens and Jani, boy, you're the same as the legends of Pinagon nigger for the power. Yabo. So the first point, what's he gave? We as a youth. What we need is that like we need our councillors to take in Kenya from the grassroots level. Kongo kufanya lugo nzeti na muzo kusabanga lugo tese funa ni nama like muzo glande lugo tini nationality. 
but buya uzekti na wazu kuti yine supai. So once wenza leondo, then sizo wazu pila nawe, and sizo support. So now, the question is now, is it chicken? The question is now, is Yini gege is in the file zenzi we ama cancel as yige gege na wanga pandu with understand about the valida is at some level. We we uh, the, the counselors like are operating in words where the 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 different sectors or institutions are operating on. Let let me just take this word. I don't know what yini kamala le word niya kufane excel. A word counselor yala na kufane le ogokala. Equazu kind of my relations with all the people that like are operating in that one. And equaz uglo bisha, those people to come and play a hand in developing the societies. What does that mean? Let me just make you an example, just a small and example. Kuning Ghana is a shik in this word, a kolene konangala. As a word counselor who's in touch with the reality or like with the ground. Um sebens wa kut as we put zinga gana ninganes and zoom shik, zinga gana ninganes and zimet and science, zinga gana ninganes and the history. So sining gana in gag and then axifuna hundred percent pass rate and dot isha bayazam. Got that in a compared to the communities of big wheels in a UK is a ten in our word. And in that UK is a ten kuna banda benzo PSC in mathematics, PSC in chemistry and everything. Who can assist to believe in Ghana this year? So as the word counselor, you have to know who's the right person to go to in order for you to get that kind of assistant. We have the community engagement in all the colleges in the school. So there's Dr. Masondo. Dr. Masondo, after school program or like the weekend program, where like you as the UK is a 10, you'll give us in Ghana or like I'm a volunteer, I in Ghana history, just for free. Yeah, well. Or you say, there's an embassy here, of, 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 of embassy, I say, I say, I say Burundi. I'm just making an example. And we're having the problem of like the, the illegal Burundians who are operating in South Africa and then but there's some attracts and everything. And you know with la 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 la. If you can have some sort of like e -e -e assistant, you can go and say like na la la. As the counselor who has been empowered, who understand the protocols of reporting and everything, it is your choice to see. Until we embassy and say, since you are an ambassador of this of, of this country, in this country, that means you're the president of this people. Your people are causing A, B, and C, and D, and F. Can you just assist us to get rid of these people because of like they're giving the bad name of your, of your people in this site? But in order for them to do that, again, they need to be empowered. And who's supposed to empower them is this kind of institutions. You see? So what, what, what we are saying is that like, we need the counselors who will understand their communities, the counselors who will have the skills and strategies of lobbying, the counselors who will have the planning capacity and the strategy and capacity, they will enrich the societies. We understand that like the issue of counselorship is more like in Sabians in Jenga Manja, where like people, they want just to go and enrich themselves. But before you enjoy that money, can you just go back a little and say, Namba Bakashbaman, what was this? Yaboka. Um, earlier on, let me just confirm, Dr. Klinam Shope, is she online? Okay. Uh, introduce Dr. Klinam Shope as a, an elderly community member who, who will be talking to us and um, giving directions to the councillors as to what exactly the community needs, where we come from, what should be what should we stop doing and what should be preserved? Dr. Klinam Shope, please join us. Sia Wamgela. Sia Wamgela, 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 Thank you, Dr. 
um, I am thinking that when we are working in our communities, we have to specialize in the areas that uh, we feel we can truly contribute and make a difference. And um, are we, what is this? Uh, yeah, I'm sorting. Yes, yeah. So it is extremely important then for us to look at where we come from and what matters to us. What are you contributing and what is your area of specialization? For me, education, arts in education have always been a part and parcel of my life from the very, very beginning. And those who came before us always knew that when you bring something to a community, whether it is your own community or it is another community that you find yourself in, like I found myself in my early 20s in Johannesburg in Alexander Township, I had to be part of the Alexander Township community. And because of the times of uh, the, 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 the apartheid era, we found ourselves uh, in very, very difficult times and struggling and uh, knowing that we're always running from the police, we're always seen as people who are guilty, whether you did something that you thought uh, was a nation building or not. For them, they saw us as is Amapegulai Kun. Uh, the terrorists as they called us. So it was always very, very complicated to, to be working in this manner and doing the work that you thought was just ordinary work as a creative artist, as somebody who is opposed to the um, uh, oppressive government that was uh, taking away our lives, our livelihoods, our communities, our children, our elders, and driving many people into exile and into jails. I think because of that type of work, the, 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 the connection with the market theater and working uh, in, in, in community theater and traveling all over South Africa and across the borders, I found myself clear that we are not only um, actors and directors and playwrights, we were also, also very clearly cultural ambassadors wherever we went. It's extremely important to know that. I think Omar Mire Makeba or Abdullah Ibrahim or Ibrahim Masigela, they led the, the, the way, or Budkaipa Simenya or Sisle Tambulu. All of them, they led the way they showed us without sitting us down and say, la, 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 la. So I'm very, very grateful to have followed in the footsteps um, somebody who has passed recently, um, the, the one and only uh, Bradon Matera, some of these people we worked with. Um, and all of these people, they worked in such a way that they were making a difference. So when I started an organization like Zanenda about storytellers. I knew that we don't belong just to the city of Johannesburg. We don't belong only to the townships that surround. We are also part and parcel of the rural areas that we could reach, uh, peri-urban areas. And so it was a given that when I moved back home to Kazulu Natal, I was going to operate in that kind of space, both uh, um, around Etewini municipality, yes, but I go as far as um, uh, Ugu district, as far as Gohading, we find ourselves in the Eastern Cape. With our literacy campaign, Nozingwadi, Mother of Books, which started beginning of 2001, we have struggled financially, we have struggled with all kinds of resources and sometimes not being able to keep full-time staff members because of lack of resources, but the work has continued. We found sister organizations. I cannot stress enough the value of having sister organizations, people you can work with, people who are on the journey with you, who know that we are here to make a difference in other people's lives. You're not here to celebrate your visibility in society. And if a person like me, as director of the Namasigo Arts and Heritage Trust now, and a founding director as well of Nozi Mwadi, Mother of Books Literacy Campaign, on it. All of what I am doing is very, very important in the sense that Still um, working. I am um, I I'm not just working on my own. I'm working with all kinds of people. And when one is called or when we are called as an organization to go and work in a certain community, we go there knowing that we're not just coming to fill vessels that, that, are, that are empty. People come uh, with, with a lot of their own experiences and saying, Laiman Denison Zaranje. 
Opongolo, this is how we do things. When we arrive, we've got schools that, that just are so close to, to, to my heart. We've got schools. We work with amazing schools. We've worked with fantastic schools. And it's extremely important then for Nozingwa, the literacy campaign, to reach schools that have got the full service element where they work with children sometimes who have got difficulties in learning or, or children that have got all forms of disabilities, but they bring such such an important um, wealth into the education space. You see, we've seen um, young storytellers coming up now, Ochumulemo on wheelchair, but hey, Bambelap was in a wheelchair, Sipete Umkondo, or Shisape, somebody who knows that she, she's got everything to bring and to contribute because the operative word in our work is sharing. So community involvement is not about um, um, sitting in a small space, you're saying in, within a small community and that's where you operate all the time. Because we've been blessed, we've been in a position to, to be visible in society, whether via television or radio or what, that light that you hold must shine on other people's lives. That is why then we do the type of work that we are doing. Another thing, we've got to be clear that there are those who came before us. We are not Americans, we are Africans. We've got to be clear, there are those who came before us. Let's honor them, let's celebrate them. So when we honor, when we honor, when we honor, the struggle is never over. There is so much for us to do. When we look at um, a person who was the premier of the, um, of the Free State Province, Umewinki uh, Direko, you think of the humility, of the dedication she had shown in education. She was a principal for years before um, we, we gained our freedom. She was the kind of person who believed in building young people. I think uh, until we, 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 we realize that um, the, the, the teachers who built us, who groomed us, who led us, they understood that their job was a calling, not just a job where you go and just um, teach and get your salary at the end of the month. And so I celebrate teachers like those. I honor all oh, Babu Tamsanga Kambule. I don't know if you know that mathematic job. And um, th there are many people who came before us. Let's honor them. Let's celebrate them. Uh, because what they did will lead us into doing even better with all the technology that we are so proud of using nowadays. And the technology that is here, it should uh, not only um, help us feel that uh, we are moving in, in leaps and bounds. We might be moving in leaps and bounds, but we need to take a break and think and think what would they have done in this time? Ubaba or Robert Sobukwe was one of the most misunderstood people. They always thought he was a very racist person and what he said, I'm a humanist. Everybody is a human being. And sometimes when you read his works, you think, hmm. How much of what he was striving for, or people like him, what they were striving for, how much of, of those have been achieved in the times we're living in? That's why then the NGO space is so important. And that is why NGOs and other such organizations should work together. Maybe so-and-so has done it already. You don't have to stress so much in that direction. Let's see how you can contribute on this side and on that side. So I'm a big believer of working and collaborating with um, um, like-minded people or people that I, I, I might be disagreeing with, but they can show me why we are disagreeing. You never stop learning as a person, umuntu, ufunda, as an afe. Let's talk about um, um, the contribution we are working, we're making in the heritage space. Um, in the heritage space or arts and education, it's extremely important for us to, to, to know that um, we are not only uh, making a difference uh, in the lives of, um, of people around us. Some, some of the people that we meet are people that we didn't know they were affected by what we are doing. Um, sometimes you meet people at airports 
you find people in an organization, in a, in a, in a, in a ceremony that has got nothing to do with the type of work that the Namasego Arts and Heritage Trust is doing. You find organizations like the Mazisi um, Gunene Foundation, you find the Robin Hood Foundation, you find the, the Chief Albert Lutuli Museum, you find the museum in, in, in a, in a, in a, in, 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 Maritzburg, the, the, the Mandela capture site, um, all of these people, we work with them. Institutions like UKZN, institutions like uh, the Nelson Mandela University, institutions like the Northwest University, they are four indigenous languages indigenous knowledge systems. We talk about UNISA. UNISA, you know, when we launched uh, the storytelling tree, the book which um, honors and celebrates and, and, and shines the light on, on operating storytellers in South Africa today, we documented 38. In fact, there are more than that 38. So there needs to be a second edition of that book. When we were uh, putting together this book under lockdown in 2020, we knew that we needed to quote certain names, people who inspired, who made sure that you feel validated in doing the work that is oral history. Oral history doesn't mean that you are less educated, doesn't mean that it's trivial what you're doing because uh, you're just not, um, you're not hip, you're not uh, with the fourth industrial revolution that people repeat so often. Not knowing, not knowing where you come from is as good as being lost in the thickest mist and trying to take whatever route that seems to be promising. You don't wanna take a route that seems to be promising. You need to be taking a route that takes you to the place where generations before were dreaming of because we are the culmination of our ancestors' dreams. We are the culmination of our ancestors' efforts Oliver Tambo were not playing when they were doing the work they were doing. They were not playing when they were doing the type of work they were doing. So all of these names, oh, oh, recently, these are people who really, really matter. Where I come from, I remember the importance of our fathers and mothers sitting us down and saying, I went the things we are watching in communities, the things we are watching in political organizations, I'm wondering, did they ever sit down with their parents who said to them, don't pour disgrace on your family name because then that family name ends up being part of your community, your community being your town or your small town or your city. And then the organization that you represent, when you are pouring disgrace on an organization that matters, that is so important for the, for the um, um, rebuilding of South Africa because we are in the process of nation building. Saki says, if you don't know why you are here, that is why then you can do whatever you want and speak in any way you want. Once you remove respect from your vocabulary, from your, the values that you use. You will speak, speak in any old way. You will interact with people in, in, in any old way. You will be able then to hurt to rape, to abuse, to do anything, to steal, take away people's livelihoods because you know, you know that your life does not matter. Start by saying when you don't honor yourself, you don't honor your family name, you don't honor your community and the, 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 the source, the source of us being Africans. I'm frustrated by the number of times I hear people say, the concept of Ubuntu, the concept of Ubuntu, the concept of Ubuntu, Ubuntu, you know, like. So let's be clear that Ubuntu, you have to live it first. Because we don't want to be Africa. Abantu umshaba wonke jigelele, bashali baz guti si fisela is ingane zetu, ne ingane ze ingane zetu ogunono. We want better things for our children and our children's children. We always say you need to contribute and build something that will benefit generations, centuries unborn. Once you're able to do that, then you, 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 you stand and walk with a sense of dignity on the land of our forefathers. When we work like this, I find that um, the, 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 the striving 
that we are dealing with. We, 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 we can complain about not having enough money in our organizations, but often it's not only money that, um, that uh, contributes and, and, and builds what we are doing. Ubambi sana, holding hands. I like the quotation that says, um, true wisdom is like a baobab tree. No one person can have arms long enough or strong enough to embrace. So <laughs> every single culture has all the wisdom in its embrace. Every single culture needs to hold hands and embrace it together. Then we can hold hands around that baobab tree. That is true wisdom. So it is that important. I think the work that UK ZN is doing in putting together the value of history, the value of community involvement, the value of us knowing that um, small organizations in even in deep rural South Africa or, or um, foundation phase teachers are part and parcel of the journey that leads to higher learning, to institutions of higher learning, like OUK ZN. I would like to close by saying the element of oral history is extremely important. I know, I know many people will tell you, let's go digital, let's go this. I am one who embraces all of the digital ways of doing things. Let's video, let's audio record, let's put things on, on, online, on YouTube and whatever. Sometimes there's a reason why people want to come together. When we are able to see each other, that's why I'm, I'm hurt by not being there with you today because I haven't been feeling so good. But when we are able to come together, our oral history museum, we're working towards opening a space like that so that when people come and listen to other people's stories, but oh, I was alive, 1947, I was alive. I know what happened. I want to tell the story from my point of view because history is a heavy matter. History is a kind of creature that has got many, many heads, has got many, many colors and many, many characters. So depending on where you are or where you were in the way you experienced and saw history, you will not tell history the way somebody else told it or the way somebody else did, even though you were at the same place at the same time. Now, you need to know that your story matters. Her story, his story, let's make sure that we tell our stories. Some of our elders are dying faster, faster than we can say, please let's meet, let's record, let's share the stories. So let's use the oral history element, but bring it to the now. Let's be happy with the technology, but let's not reverse and, and, and say, we don't want um, the, the people who don't have technology to be heard. Let's go to them. Let's sit with them. Let's listen to them. Many, many elders feel like nobody wants to hear them because we believe in Grandmother Google. Grandmother Google can tell you things, but Grandmother Google doesn't know you, doesn't care for you, doesn't love you. Our elders need to be heard. When they get to be heard, they give us blessings because every single time an elder gets to say, Ngiabonga, that's a blessing upon blessing upon blessing, extremely important. I think our oral history should be celebrated as much as we celebrate the archives of written material, as much as we celebrate the archives in the digital space that is shared all over the world. Let's find spaces where we say, until we see a brighter future in our children's eyes, not much of what we do today has any value. Sivelapi, siapi, nukubalea wentlo nipo, 
a season said. A, a warm welcome to our guests who've been joining us. Um, Dr. Sianda Keswa, I'd like to call you on stage so you can introduce our gentlemen who have learned and read and read and wrote and written stories about community engagement. Dr. Keswa is a lecturer in library information systems in the Peter Marisbeck campus. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Uh, greetings to everyone and all protocol is observed. Uh, yeah, I've been touched by uh, what, was been, what, what has been said by the elder, Utogotelo Mamutu Namshope, and by our uh, young gentleman, Uvunda. So in our community engagement, we are all about balance. We brought in the youth and the elder. And again, now we shouldn't be excited about finding our way to the moon while getting lost on our way to the village. So the balance is very important. Uh, when they spoke earlier, they did uh, point out some challenges, especially Uvunda. He pointed out some challenges that are there in our communities, what needs to be done. As we are a community of balance, we are now bringing a balance by bringing people who will assist us in terms of uh, giving us tips on how to then uh, close the gap, you know. So our next topic or next session will be on how to do need analysis, implementation and assessment of progress. You know, so we will, we're not just pointing out challenges, but again, now we need to help uh, our councillors and our community in terms of doing need analysis, implementation, and assessment of a progress. So the first person to help us with that is Uma Shobo, who is in our IPA cluster, political science department, who is an academic, a research fellow in the Morris Webb Race Relation Unit within the School of Social Sciences here at UKZN. He's an avid political commentator, and an analyst for several uh, print media and radio stations. His current research interests are rural urban spatial development, township politics, alienation and existentialism. His academic publication and conference presentation are in the areas of indigenous knowledge systems and environmental ethics, as well as climate change, uh, also poverty reduction. Much of the stage is yours, sir. Great. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, it is quite strange to be standing in front of people after two years of being uh, uh, in the virtual space. So I'm excited to be in front of you today. And uh, I hope you're going to have an interactive engagement uh, moving forward. Uh, first, let me thank our program director and uh, greet our College of Humanities uh, Management and the School of Social Sciences Management. And I would say all protocols observed, but a special thanks to Dr. Harry Masson for picking a very junior lecturer to stand before such wonderful individuals and very good people. Thank you. So mine is very simple. Uh, it's just to take through counselors uh, through a journey of needs analysis. What do you mean by needs analysis? So the overview basically would be 
looking at definitions of, an, of needs analysis and its importance. How to conduct a needs analysis in a municipal ward? Why is it important to assess uh, progress after implementing a needs analysis? Uh, I hope you don't mind me pacing because I come from the political philosophy space. So we usually walk and pace so that we can, we can think, right? So as an icebreaker, uh, I thought maybe let's make this interactive and then ask a question, what is the need? Because these basic concepts have a tendency of becoming very complex. And that's what I've noticed. And you usually take things for granted. Ah, I know everyone knows what's a need. So if anyone can just share, what is a need? What is your understanding of a need? Our counselors, I know that they like to talk. That's why they were elected. What is a need? I have some students here that I've taught before. Before I point fingers, can you just raise your hand? What is the need? What is the need? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, things that are required to leave, right? Things that are required to leave. But needs have changed. They've evolved over time. Right? There are areas that you cannot traverse without a car. So a car has become a need, right? Uh, wearing, wearing a mask became a need during the COVID pandemic, right? So our needs have changed. And for some of us who grew up, you know, before the iron curtain fell and who attended school at that time, we're told that a need basically is a is something that you cannot live without. You remember the saying, right? Yeah, in the 1980s, I'm now showing my, my age, right? A need is something you cannot live without. But I think this definition, in a way, it is very loose, right? As I've said, that needs have evolved, have changed. But also needs have become lives essential, such as oxygen, blood, right? You need blood transfusion, it's a need. We need water, you need nutrition, right? These are all needs. Now we can then begin to understand what needs are, right? From what Maslow hierarchy of needs, right? Outlines. And we've seen this pyramid, right? Where we speak of basic needs such as food, such as water, security is a need, right? Now, where do our counselors fall in? They are able to provide basic needs. I think Mr. Vunda said that, said they are there to ensure that we have basic needs. Now, the answer therefore, a need is then, is, it is a gap between what should be and what is, right? So it's, it, the need actually stands between what you ought to have and what you currently don't have. And that becomes a problem. So a need is a problem basically, right? I have a problem. I don't have access to, therefore I need this. Yes? So a need becomes a problem. So what are we assessing? We're assessing a problem. So when we're assessing a problem, then we are entering a different space, a research space. And the research space, then we, we, we normally have what we call a research purpose statement, right? What is the problem? And what is the purpose of conducting such a research, right? So when we enter that space, we are then understanding the problem. Now, some of the definitions is that a need, it is a set of duties, so sorry, of procedures, and it is used to determine a gap between, a gap or discrepancies between present what is and desired what should be, right? So this is a definition that comes closer to explain what a needs analysis or a needs assessment, right? And therefore we have objectives that we need to answer and we need to focus on. So to identify the community problem. So for counselors, it is your duty to identify the community problem, which we can substitute with a community need. So to determine the magnitude and the factors that contribute to that problem or to that need, 
and also to identify possible and achieve achievable solutions, right? And predict desirable outcomes. And how do we do this, right? We then engage in a neat analysis process. Like any operational pro, like any operational undertaking, you then have to have a process, right? A plan, how we're going to do it. So you have to plan and organize, right? So you assemble people that are well-versed about the problem or the need of your community, you bring them closer, you collect data, right? There are methods that need to be adopted in order to collect data. And then you collate all that information, you look at it and try and analyze that data. And then you share the result through public fora and uh, facilitate action. Now, what happens during the planning and the organization? The information is gathered, right? By calling introductory meetings with several stakeholders. As a counselor, I think it is important to introduce yourself. Uh, in my area, I think it took me more than a year to know who my counselor was, right? Because I distanced myself when there were these infightings and squabbles that were happening within you know, the parties. But it took me a year to know who my counselor was because there's nothing that really required me to engage with the counselor and the counselor did not see any need to call a meeting. So as a counselor, it is important that you first call a meeting, introduce yourself, who are you, right? You learn more about the community needs during those meetings, okay? Where you introduce yourself because that's where people are going to vent their frustrations. They're going to vent their problems, right? And what they need. You then identify relevant stakeholders and, and uh, that are going to be part of a project that you want to, 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 to undertake, right? And get involved in the brainstorming sessions. Counselors are very distant and they are not engaged in these brainstorming sessions. We don't know what counselors think. They, in, in return, they don't even know what communities want. So we need that knowledge sharing process that's going to happen during the planning and organization, right? Work with your communities, work with your ward committees, work with every stakeholder that is involved. Work with your activists, okay? And make your expectations known to the planning team. What is it that you want to achieve? As a counselor, I don't have too many uh, wishes. Just pick three, three problems and say, these are going to be my targets. And this is how you are going to benchmark my performance based on these, okay? And then you monitor and evaluate the process, okay? So this is the planning phase, right? And usually this is going to happen in the boardroom. It's going to happen in your war rooms, wherever you sit and, and get this information, right? And then you collect data. Now we go to the field to collect data. Uh, Dr. Harry Mastondo said, uh, the husband said, our communities or in our villages, uh, it's our laboratories. So that's where we perform experiments and we collect data, right? So you need to have public participation meetings and, con and, and, and maybe have surveys. I know maybe this is, can be too far-fetched for some of you guys, right? Uh, but you can always get assistance on how to get information. What is it that people need? What is it that people are struggling with? How can we assist them? What is possible and what is not possible? right? Ask residents for their opinions, right? And then you move toward committee members, right? And you know what committee members, you then sit down with them and say, okay, fine. What are service, service delivery requirements in this ward, right? What have you identified, right? And then you also receive proposals from private sector, from the NGOs, from all other stakeholders, right? They come together and say, okay, we are proposing this. Right, And I have a first-hand experience of an activist who came with a brilliant idea to a counselor, but a counselor asked the activist, do you have a membership of my organization, right? Are you a cut caring member? And if not, then I won't help you, right? So these are some of the challenges that we, we confront. These are some of the challenges that we have and they end up repelling help that is going to change our communities. But also the self-assessment and personal observation. I mean, you grew up in this community, 
you know you don't have a, a recreational facility in this village. So you don't need people to tell you that you know exactly what's happening, right? Uh, people don't have access to water. Yes, there are taps that are available, but there's no water coming out. What do you do as a counselor, right? Institutions of higher learning. We usually send our students to go out, collect data and do all sorts of things, right? These students, they are there to shine a light on you to say, there's this area that I'm focusing on. There might be a problem. And how can we work together? And often enough, you see counselors becoming gatekeepers with red tapes, right? Instead of giving you gatekeepers letter, they then give you red tapes. No, you go to there, go to that person. You can't do this. See me on Tuesday, you know, schedule a meeting, blah, blah, blah. Let me see your instrument. No, go and change these questions and all of that. And they've changed the fabric of research. And that masks the real problem, the real issue that students are trying to address and put forward. So identifying community needs, current situation, the status quo, right? During the data collection method, it assists. And then try and collate all these uh, assessments and put them together, categorize community needs according to departments, right? To say, this can be addressed by the Department of Road, this can be addressed by Department of Transport or Water and so forth, right? So as you are able to compartmentalize the problems like that, right? Then your planning at least has started to take shape, right? And from there, you can then put it in the hierarchy of importance. Try to determine the magnitude and the complexities of each need. What is it that you can do? What is it that you cannot do during your tenure? right? That becomes a problem. And how much resources are going to be needed, right? Don't promise people things you cannot even deliver, right? I'm going to ensure that you have stable electricity when the entire country is on blackout, right? So be realistic. In your meetings, tell them that, look, if there's a village that doesn't have electricity, I can ask the municipality to come and install and electrify the community, but you are going to have blackout right? Refrain from connecting illegally and so forth, all those things, right? All these illegal connections, they contribute to the, 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 the power outages, okay? Arrange the needs in their order of importance with realistic timelines, right? Like I said, you choose three and you say, okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to build a, maybe I'm going to build a, a recreational facility. It's either going to have a park, or it's going to be a sport field or whatever, it's possible, you can do it, right? Uh, the second thing, I know that there is a grandmother who stays in a mud house and I can always bring people who are going to assist and build that house for that, that mother, right? And then I'm going to make sure that I patch all the potholes and then I'm going to put uh, speed humps on the roads, those three. After your tenure, you then say, okay, fine. Did I do what I promised? Yes, and if you give me another chance, another term, I'll be able to do one, two, three, and four again, right? Be realistic. So this, in, in a data analysis, this is a method that I adapted, right? From uh, Shama, Lonum, Lo, Lo, and, and, and Suez, uh, 2000. They have it differently, but here I try to tell her make it for the counselor so that at least they have an idea. You don't even need uh, SPSS, you can, do it using SPSS, but also you can just scribble and just do it you know, manually. So it's either you can use SPSS, right? Which is a statistical package for social sciences where you can do cross tabulations and uh, of variables and, and, and try to, to put all these needs in order of importance. So the very important one, but is it unsatisfied? If it's, if it's very unsatisfied, then that means there's a concern. Then that becomes a, a project. Then you are supposed to fulfill that. But it's, if it's very uh, satisfied, but also it is very important, then it's a strength. So it's something that you can enhance in your community. It's something that you can make sure that becomes a, a, a flagship project for you to say, okay, look, there's a, a, a kid in my community who can do math like in his head, he doesn't even use calculators and so forth, right? But he needs bursaries. You make sure that he gets support. You, you make sure that you support the family. 
right? So that they'll be able to take this kid maybe to varsity, to maybe even outside the country, right? To these Ivy League uh, universities, right? So as a counselor, you would have done something tremendous and that actually is going to add a positive note on you as a person, as an individual, but also it's going to make your, your resume look sparkly, right? So you've identified possible and achievable solutions. Can I achieve this? Is it doable, right? And after all is said and done, please make sure that you go back and share the results through the public forums and facilitate action plan, right? What do I mean by this? You present a list of identified strengths and concerns. These are the three concerns I have. These are the three strengths I, I have, right? And can we reflect maybe as a community, what is it that we want? What is it that we think? Maybe we can just juggle, juggle up this list, right? Because so often enough you find counselors coming in and imposing this top-down approach, right? Imposing on communities things that they don't really need. Let us build a swimming pool. We have rivers and dams. We can swim there, right? And we don't swim every day. One thing we need is a bridge across this river because the school is on the other side, but you want to build a swimming pool. So there's always that disconnect between communities and, 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 and counselors. Therefore, you need to submit at public meetings, uh, you know, as part of the agenda and report back, make sure that the list is endorsed by the community and, 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 and make sure that all the stakeholders are involved. And then you implement these projects and monitor the progress because often enough, we don't monitor progress. This is what I've seen even in my area. Department of Roads will come and lay a tar, make sure that the road is fine. And then you have stormwater drain uh, on one side, and then you have people from the municipality who want to put electricity lights or street lights on this side. Now, because they want to run cables through the stormwater drain and that side, and they're going to cut the road, right? So that they can run their cables and they leave them like that without patching those, those uh, potholes. Next thing, the rains come, the road is damaged. Why didn't they start laying the cables or the stormwater drainage? And then lastly, you then put a tar, right? So you always find these contradictions and disconnects between departments. That means they are not talking to one another. And maybe they don't even invite people who are gonna say, we are planning to do this and at, at this time, and this department say, you are planning to do that. So please hold on, let's start with this one. And therefore you will come afterwards. So if you can create that synergy, if you can create that, 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 that conversation it's amongst department and of course, having a counselor as a glue, right? As a conduit that is ensuring that this conversation continues. They'll be able to implement projects that are feasible and projects that would be monitored and projects that can be evaluated for quality and check if the communities is satisfied with the needs. And once you have done this, I promise you, there will be no need for protest or service delivery protest because people will have a counselor that they can talk to. They have a counselor that is able to engage the communities, a counselor that is able to conduct a needs analysis. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Matlobo. Uh, this was very enlightening. Uh, Yeah, uh, while we are still fiddling with technology, it's so nice that you are having it uh, as a hybrid uh, session because it means that we are a very inclusive uh, community. So everyone is included, those who are physically here and those who are, are at a distance uh, virtually, you know. 
So as Omar uh, highlighted uh, how then we do in its assessment, uh, we've identified a problem, councillor, now we want to build the bridge. But now we are, we are trying to run away from this situation of, of uh, being accused of Ikanzela uh, Kashabantubal, you know. So how do we then um, ensure participation of civil society in the project? It's a question. That question then will be, as we will be assisted on uh, trying to answer that question by uh, one of our colleagues as well, our very own, Usandi Lemguni, who is a lecturer with IPA cluster again. And uh, his research activities focus on civil society, inclusive green economy, political participation, and good governance. After Umguni is done, we will then have a session where we'll ask questions to both Umguni and Umasho. Umguni, can you take over? Uh, a very good morning, uh, Sanbona. Uh, thank you to the program director. And uh, thank you to the organizers uh, of this uh, program, especially uh, Dr. Fari Masondo, uh, for being uh, considered to also make uh, my two cent uh, contribution uh, to the project. So basically, what I will be providing is an outline of how uh, participation can be facilitated in, uh, uh, in our communities when there is a, a development project. And uh, some of the models that I will be proposing are based on what I'm currently doing uh, for my research uh, in my PhD, where I'm looking at the green economy in relation to how it can be made uh, to be inclusive. And uh, a number of concepts have come up before I make a, a, my presentation from uh, Mr. Vonla as uh, well as uh, my colleague, Mr. Ndombela. Concepts uh, such as making a democracy, uh, I mean, concepts such as making a, a, a development democratic, concepts such as a public participation, the disconnect that may exist in our communities when these projects are, are being proposed or are being planned or also when they are being implemented. And also the involvement of stakeholders and how development needs to ensure that there's a synergy that exists between the society and the state as a, an agent of a development. And uh, we've seen in a number of instances, service delivery protest, and also complaints coming from communities to our councillor also And uh, that has been because of how uh, participation hasn't been as effective as it should be. But also, we always look at participation based on outputs, especially when it comes to development, that so and so will be able to get employed or will be able to get a tender from this particular project. So my proposal is that participation shouldn't be about looking at outputs. The first important starting point is a participation from the point of design or from the point of uh, planning. Now, why is the involvement of uh, civil society is essential or is important? They ensure that everyone, or it will ensure that everyone is involved in the process of uh, development. And in most instances, civil society organizations are always uh, present in, all, in our communities. Just as a background of my uh, presentation, I'll start by describing or outlining uh, some of the examples or the definitions of uh, civil societies. They are entities engaged uh, in non-state activities. Their activities may be for identity 
and uh, they, uh, their activities can also be aimed at uh, monitoring the activities of the state. Civil societies can be informal. They can also be formal entities independent from the state, may focus on mediating uh, relations between the state and an individual. So some of the examples or some of the functions that civil society organizations or formations are likely to take, they may act as watchdogs, they may act as uh, advocates of service uh, provision, they may act as experts, capacity builders, incubators, representatives, uh, citizenship uh, champions, and a number of other functions. So the involvement of uh, civil societies in all likelihood automatically ensures that the masses or our communities are also involved uh, in, in these uh, development uh, projects. And uh, there are two models that I'd like to propose uh, that work hand in hand uh, with each other that speak about the involvement of civil society uh, organizations or civil societies in general in relation to development projects. Firstly, is what is called the, the rights-based approach, which is coined uh, by Professor Chitong and Omen, Omen, as well as uh, the people-centered approach. Now, these approaches can be effective in ensuring for the participation of uh, the civil societies uh, in development projects, but also these uh, models or these approaches ensure that participation of the communities happens harmoniously and also happens in a way that it is able, uh, development is able to achieve uh, what it is intended for. Now I'll start by looking at defining both of these uh, models, starting with the rights-based uh, approach or model. Now, it looks at uh, the civil society as uh, enablers and leaders of uh, development than entities that react to deal uh, with issues of underdevelopment. The rights-based model places communities at the center of development, both as drivers, but also as, as, as also recipients or beneficiaries of, of, of development. As I indicated, when you look at the, our social fabric uh, in South Africa, issues of uh, service delivery protest, that is where in most instances we see the presence of uh, civil society organizations. And uh, I think uh, the best way for the civil society organizations uh, to participate or uh, to be able to be active uh, in development. They shouldn't be only coming as watchdogs of uh, underdevelopment or complaining against the uh, underdevelopment. They should be present uh, in the communities uh, in such a way that they are also enablers or designers of uh, development. For instance, when there's a project being proposed in a community, they should be able to assist the citizens uh, in order in the formulation of uh, the project itself, but also in its uh, implementation. Now, moving on to the second model or the second approach is the people-centered approach. These approaches uh, work interchangeably with the people-centered approach in the same way as the right-based approach. The people-centered approach states that the communities must be responsible for their own uh, development and should be able to benefit from it. Now, let me look at the, the key concept of uh, each of these uh, approaches. Now, with the right-based approach, it is an approach or it is a model that will ensure that uh, citizens or communities are able to, to participate so the involvement of the civil society must be in such a way that one, it ensures a participation, it ensures accountability, it ensures non-discrimination in the, in the process of participation, but also it ensures empowerment. 
Now, with participation, we speak uh, of uh, development uh, being seen as a process that can only be achieved uh, through the participation of the citizens or of the masses. It is essential for the, mass, for the participation to occur as it ensures that the needs of communities are to be known. Participation can be, approved, can be achieved through the processes such as enabling access to institutions and information as well as facilitating redress where it is needed. That is where the role of civil societies uh, is, need, is needed. Providing our communities or our masses with the right institutions in dealing with certain issues to avoid the issues of service delivery protests, for an example, or frustrations coming from communities, but also providing the information in dealing with issues of redress where there are frustrations. The second concept is still on the right-based approach is accountability. Those involved in development must account to the masses it also means that accountability is a necessary mechanism to ensure effective participation. The outcome of development is always central as it means that people's rights must be realized through development. And uh, it doesn't only refer to the state, but non-state actors must also account to the masses and also to donors who support their initiatives. The involvement of the civil society doesn't necessarily mean that it only comes uh, as a facilitator of uh, development, which is coming through uh, the state. But it also means that civil societies themselves as entities, they can be responsible for development through assistance uh, coming from donors, for an example. Non-discrimination, which is the third concept that's still uh, on the right-based uh, approach. Uh, is concerned with the recognition of those who are vulnerable and how they should be treated equally. It, also, it is also about ensuring that the masses have equal access uh, to the information in order to deal uh, with issues of equality, for instance, or to ensure that everyone is able to play an important role uh, when it comes uh, to development. Lastly, still looking on the right-based uh, approach is uh, on empowerment. This pillar is concerned with ensuring that the citizens are capacitated so that they can participate effectively in, de in development processes. It is also about enabling the masses to be in full control of their own development, uh, which is something that I already mentioned with the participation, for instance, providing information to the masses which can be done by the civil society, for instance, ensuring that they have the right information about who to consult when it comes to certain projects. Now, moving to the second model or the second approach is the people-centered approach. Some of the key concepts within this approach or the key elements are awareness raising, social mobilization, self-reliance and uh, sustainability. With awareness raising, there is a need for the masses to be aware of their situation so that they can participate effectively in their development. For instance, what is needed in our communities is always known by uh, the members of our individual communities. So as Masago did mention that, when, one, when a councillor initiates a public participation from the masses, it's highly likely that they will be uh, the ones who will provide the right information uh, regarding what projects are needed or what development uh, initiatives are needed. So this is where we also need the, the involvement of the civil society. Each participation on development should ensure that the masses or the people at grassroots level are aware about that, the issues that affect them and they are able to make the, the right decisions. Secondly, is about the social mobilization. Participation in groups on issues of development is much convenient when it comes uh, to issues of uh, resources. So the presence of uh, the civil societies ensures that the ease mobilization from the masses, the masses are able to come out and uh, contribute uh, on issues of development when they are requested to do so. 
Thirdly, still looking on the people-centered approach is uh, self-reliance. Conditions must be conducive for the people to be able to, to participate effectively in development. So once uh, community members participate, for instance, in a single project through the assistance of the civil society organizations, it's highly likely that uh, it will be something that uh, will become sustainable in future. It will be much more convenient for the businesses to be able to, to participate uh, in future projects that uh, may be uh, uh, initiated uh, in our communities. So moving uh, to the last uh, concept, uh, which is also linked with what uh, I spoke about in relation to self-reliance, is uh, sustainability. Development must be sustainable. In order for development to be sustainable, people must be involved or the masses must be involved from the planning process, implementation process. Once they are involved in those two stages, they will also be able to benefit from the outcomes of development. And it will also ensure that involvement of the masses or of the people or of our communities is sustainable even for future projects. So this is where I will end uh, 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 my, my presentation. I looked at the two models that I would propose to be uh, utilized for the involvement or for the participation of the civil societies, which is the right-based uh, approach as well as uh, the people-centered uh, approach. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for the opportunity. Hey, thanks very much, uh, Mguni. Uh, please do not go because we have will have a session for questions, suggestions, comments, and answers. Uh, Mashallah, next to you, there's a mic. Can you please turn it on when it's time for you to respond? Uh, I'll open a round of questions. Uh, start with maybe three hands from the floor and also try to accommodate our uh, virtual community as well. And those who are virtual, uh, it's also possible that you can just type in your uh, in the chat box there. I'll attend to your questions there as well and then address to the uh, rightful presenter. Any questions to both our presenters? Oh, there's Dr. Zondi. Greetings, everyone. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all the presentations that have been rendered here. Um, for me, I'll just not speak like Dr. Zondi because I, I come from a space of privileges. Um, my concern as an advocate and an, as a community activist is to say, now that things have been discussed here, and for me, they have been pitched at a very high level. And, and why I'm saying this is because of the caliber of, 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 stick, of, 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 of counselors who are our fathers and their literacy level, you know, really does not meet the standard. So my question to both uh, presenters is then asking, what is the simplest decolonial method of responding to these service delivery issues that one, we are having? Two, that would also um, accelerate um, responsive public participation, which seems to be not been happening at, at ground level, at grassroots level, just because, I mean, it will be pointless that we come up with this high level, you know, solutions, but they are not taking anything home, you know, as a result, then uh, this beauty would then only benefit me because I understand, you know, research. I'm a researcher myself. I understand uh, part public participation, but what are these indigenous methods of public participation that they can then go back home and resuscitate in case they are not there? And I'm saying this because, oh mama, 
um, was even saying oral history, you know, what are oral methods of participation, which our ancestors, you know, tried before in order to bring the community together, which also resolved uh, quite a number of issues, even before we even talked about democracy. You know, she even spoke about Ubuntu. Then how can we then practicalize Ubuntu as another corridor that enhances public participation and transversal service delivery? Thank you. Any other question? Thanks, Dr. Zondi. While people are still drafting and thinking of their questions, uh, Mashobo, could you please respond? Okay. Uh, uh, Agafundirem Champagne alone, and go in what? Angi is we. Given a land of in cooling a cart, he got the book on a bond. As no man I combola him. Eh, Miss say bond Zazaz young kid, pains again the win. Game no good to go pala. Babe was good to bam me and cut away in Babingalel. The minute Mutum Bingalela Uzo Besebega Utabalo Akuoti as in Ngazuti Akambigasum for it, Ugoti no goti guia pet. Always be in Jalong Umkabel, Quagne ringing as a high, Quaguban in Sangan, or what on the Sakone Queque, who pinned the foot to go show is in the sea for size Bonalas and second part him. Now that brought a sense of communalism. Learning as a command. Mm. We are so individualistic, Ugoti. Sessi is a Bonabanibus Bessendola Macad, Ugoti Nom Guab, our surprise to see with six Tunia Macad, Ugoti, on such and such a day we are Sifisha Uban, Integrate Ingen Zegile. Now we need to go back, right, to those systems. Gobara the seven zel, who would see Sazan in is, you know, no, no, seven no knows well. I think it's one thing assessing a senai, right? Empathy. A senai, you'll end to look at the seas of Antuguti, who petue yin, Gwenzaralan, Yinga Cosegu Lulu, good singing, a vetra econi mal. You go to wins in the Tilgota, Ibona Gugusi, Etenu Hambe, Uyo Isa, Nabanta Bangata living Lale Ward. And in Gens in the seal and Hambe no pose. So Leon Dole is so say Ubuntu. Umam Rate Kulumanga, I would say I send now Lendo Ubuntu. So we need to craft and create what Franz Fanon called a new humanism. Right? So a new humanism, Gatlegat, who should say Buyela, who lend us a see your Nagot to a Sibuela. No laws now listen to a ning, says I was with his letter. My services are at the engies. So Uba Bonga Fundil, the Telwood Menager, Abuel Umparat, Ayo Kuluma now, Umparat, Yeni Lena, Enning Nayo, Eni Dingai, Yip Leg Gap, Eng Melengi Val, and in Elaning Seas, Wooting in Longo Zigap, Koba Ezin as Zingan, Essay Fundil, says Yaz, Wooting Mipim Yangam, got as his or Copus Angel and Wooty Cancel. I'll take a cancel a liathlin, a cancel a genic. So I think we need to go back to those systems next. Uh, thanks, much over. Mguni. Oh, okay. Eh, the call is a good presentation of seven days. I'm not a match. I guess it was accessible for everyone. Or Angis or Alanga, go bonga gatiba la leg. So Nitanguti in Gizo Shala, P. Lokunda Kulu Yagamasho, Buguti in Pilon Shalo, a semparatin it in Lela E. Yon. He has Vumela Utis Nagwazi, Utis Totosan in Parati, Singabaho, Li, Ungaba Ama, Ama Cancella. 
Ngogwa mbwa na ngangu uti okba lega kunjoba atesho ni umashobu. Aba huli onga makanza ila kmele babuwe lega kulu emparatini. Basibu nzise li mkandu ekona na makoko akoni mparatini. E, koni mkandu jifana ni mkandu ya bomtabu, for example. Ngogwa mbisa na nuhulmeni bomtabu ya si bomtabu, for example. Banga wazi, uguti ba wazi, utola ilo kunja, ugu bambisana ni mparati, mparati igu wazi, pati kwa peta, isho is kalo zae, inazo mailana ni ntutugo yae. E, maninga makoto sinawe mparati ni, for instance, even his talk fella is kwa mparati ni, tu zinga search and zisa so jenga nlela yoguti abantu betu, ba wazi, uti bazwa gali se izu labo, gintutugo yae. Abantu bang akja blela ukfawa gumka komuse, for an example. Ko ta mozo tata abantu uba bege from ekaleni, ut uhulmen ufisu wakun wake ufisu nwake un nakele inkwa kogang. Uba bege stombi. Bazo wazu understand the makfigis kati la, bazo wazu kuza makfigis kati la, shambe i i project isi ya mangen wak shot the ways mad. So izindo ezifana ne ne nembangazwe ori mpigisho etinga intuthuke emphakathini izinto ezingavikeleka lezo ngokuthi siye emkhandleni nakuma structures a existayo emphakathini yethu already sicoxisane nemphakathi yethu sizwe izikhalo zayo and then messes khuluma ngendabake yokufakwa ke kwa kwawo la ma projects lawa emphakathini yethu ngathi ngiphendule ngokwanele ngiyabo uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Mguni. Uh, there's a hand on the floor. I had a question here, virtually. I, was, I couldn't grasp it properly. Uh, there was a comment saying, can the questions be, can the answers not be in Isizulu? Not, can, can, the, can the answers not be in English because not all of us understand Zulu? So it was quite confusing to me. I did ask again, I'm still hoping that the person who asked the question will clarify. So then on that note, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll request our presenters to maybe code switch, yes, to accommodate everyone. And before taking the comment, the question on the floor, there's a comment from uh, Manikom to the presenters. Thank you to all the presenters for the very interesting and useful inputs around the importance of making the university a public university that endeavors to work with communities towards the, the realization of their own needs and development and empowerment. The emphasis is on working with where the relationship is mutually beneficial, but responsive to the needs of the community. Uh, thanks for the comment, uh, Manikom, we note it. Can we have the question now on the floor? Is it on? Thank you, uh, Program Director, for the opportunity. Firstly, I'd like to check, can I be bilingual? Yes, warmly welcome. Okay. Um, maybe let me start by uh, answering the question to say, maybe in sessions like this, in future, we, we, we need a, maybe people who will translate so that we accommodate everyone, uh, uh, um, so that we feel comfortable in speaking in the language. Yes, Zulu or Isingisi, so that Naba Fisa Ugubuza and Gisizulu Bezuguazi Ugubuza, Gisizulu, Naba Funa Ugu understand the language is over comfortable Gubona. Um, Upomele Lo Wagazagwe Oconala, a college in Yagua Humanities. Gi Gi Umbuzoami Ugu Ubaba Usandi. Okulume nge study asenza yoguim community engagement. He spoke of the model, a model Zai tool that he is using. I will stick on the one that he spoke about, a model of a, 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 a people centered approach. I do understand the, the model very well. And uh, he speak about an ally, an, uh, 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 aligning the needs analysis with the community engagement uh, participation, which I do agree with it. But my concern is on the, 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 the access to information by the masses and uh, the development of, of, of the project 
uh, uh, by, by the masses. My concern is on where does he put the leadership and the government in, in involving them on the projects that he's talking about. Are the councillors that we have today and the councillors that we have in the community uh, represents leadership because he only talks about the masses or they are part of the masses. It's because if I'm a councillor, Bezo represent a government as leadership and I'm a stakeholders. Gizoba ninginga ngoba i government iona eyenza ama policies iona epete i constitution and the masses of sebenzisa i top down approach ibona abantu abaseta out loma policies egi wona tinekfanele siwa implement lapha on the grassroots and then umanga besizo kamuga sebenzisa i people centered approach we need to come up with inle la esizo titina empagatin waga mshabu ya lingan Sinalama projects. Si shinje in the look government as a benzanga, nanga man needs eight. U government ut ago sejen this wiganje and some of the policies that are there. Kumele si washinje to suit our needs and recommend easy dotina esi dinga yo and the policies and guidelines that are there must suit our needs and in the latina esi fisis in dozenze genga yo here because they draft things there based on what they think need to happen about us without us. But while we are here uh, in the grassroots, we know exactly uguta manza we kolapaya and amanzi alapaya umpombi ulapaya and isi pay to see lapaya. And then galende la sikamuga nama recommendations, sikamuga nama recommendations as as gathe, uguti they are going to suit our needs and wants. And siye gelendo yo top down, kube i bottom up approach. So if ezoti, e people centered approach and the ama councillors that he talks about are also represent e leadership, I'm going to be having a concern. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, thanks, uh, Mguni. Before you respond, uh, I would just like to alert uh, uh, us that we only have limited times in term time in terms of the session. Should we have more questions, please let's jot them down and uh, keep them. We'll still have maybe another opportunity to engage on them. Please respond, Mr. Mguni. Okay, uh, I note uh, the concern and also the question. So, Ngobami seven is the approach is not necessarily uh, to change what we already have. Vaksigu Kshinja is into SSZ corner already. Uzama Uti Siwas Wenza Avant Uti. Bas Bandagani and into two in Paratinia. True, we can say that councillors are representatives of government, but also they are representatives of uh, our communities. So, with the people centered approach, the main issue here is to recognize the people at grassroots level by enabling them to participate in development. So this doesn't necessarily mean that we only look at local government or at councillors. We also look at national government as well as uh, other structures of government because national government seems to be more involved when it comes to planning as well as participation. So we have these structures that exist at national level that seek to ensure that the masses are involved in development. So these through the proposal of the right-based approach, it is about the activation of these platforms or these tools of public participation that need uh, to be activated. We look at uh, our leaders, our community leaders, such as councillors and civil society organizations as activators of these platforms, enabling our communities to participate 
uh, in projects utilizing these platforms that exist uh, of participation. Now, my name is Zamukusho Uti. Singa pegi ohul many base basem paratini to Njenga Makansela and Jenga Kwa Bantu Pella Aba Egu Ibonava Pega in the Bazin to two as Pega Gotua, even Nagwe Zinye is structures Gahul many Kakula's national government. Dragon Gue Owenza Gakulu is into the planella into Tugo or the Clella into Tugo. Futo ungena ushale pegelela is ndaba zo, 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 zo participate wem parati eitu. Hulmeni marazame uwenza uguti. I participation ni mparati eitu. Maguza enzo tenze ntutugo. Maksechenzi iswe is ntiza kusebenza ez kona already ez akiwe ebez nga sechenzi isa when it comes uh, to I, 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 I participation. The sections is so good. The impact is to it was a contributor. Oh, who men was a makarunga makante la basi zane rakulu. Na mo kana zeshi inzafana na masivil societies. Uze impact is to it was a uz bandaga anya nezinkle lozin to two. Ziga who men. It is where I will end my response. Uh, thanks, uh, Ngoni. Uh, we have a question and answer box on our chat for those who are visual. Please uh, uh, draft your questions there and our panelists uh, will then dedicate time to respond to them. Uh, on that note, I would like to thank our presenters uh, for the session and uh, also hand over to our program director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Keswa. Mathobo and Mguni. I will next we'll take a short uh, comfort break. Ten minutes, please. Outside here, there's tea. Please go outside, help yourself to tea. And um, the the ladies outside who are dressed in white will show you where the restrooms are. Should ah, should you require a restroom? Thank you. We shall be back at. Uh, we'll resume at twenty past eleven. You're welcome to come back with your cup of tea here.
Colleagues, please settle down so we can begin. Welcome back. Uh, Please cycle down so we can resume. Now we're going to chat to the people who've been there, done that, made an impact and are still making an impact in our communities. I'm going to call the four ladies to come up on stage and join me in the seats here. The first one is Dr. Geraldine Jagannath. Dr. Jagannath is a lecturer, senior lecturer in anthropology in the School of Social Sciences. Next is Professor Bosisi Wengonki Mandlini. Professor Bosisi Wengonki Mandlini. Professor Nkonki Mandlini is a lecturer at uh, Mangosutu University of Technicon. Thank you for joining us. The third one will be Doc Professor Angela James. Please join us on stage. Professor Angela James is a leader in community engagement at the Edgewood campus. The fourth person will be Dr. Heshela Nasi. She will be filling in for Mam Ella Gandhi, who was invited, wanted to be with us, but she couldn't because of ill health. Dr. Heshela Nasi will be joining us online. 
I'm gonna give Dr. Geraldine Jack Jagannath a chance to make a presentation. Thank you. Please could I have some more thanks? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My warm greetings to all of you attending in person as well as virtually, all protocols observed. Uh, my presentation this morning is indeed timeless and very meaningful um, as I come to the end of my term at the clinic garden. I hope in the time that is allocated to me, I do justice to a year long project that has enriched my life as hopefully many others as well. Um, the project is Sorry, the project is an urban gardening and food security project, and I'm going to present to you a case study of the Cato Manor Clinic in Umkumbane, Durban. Urban gardening can mean many things. It can mean to educate new and older generations on food and its complex relationship with the environment. It can mean to promote biodiversity and food sovereignty or to fight against food insecurity and support the access to fresh whole food in cities such as Durban. Collaborations such as this clinic garden project is centered on a community-based research and service learning approach within a community engagement context and has offered multiple learning benefits for community members, students, academic staff during a very challenging time of COVID-19, um, a time of rising urbanization, food insecurity, and climate change. The Cato Manor facility, to give you a little bit of context, is located in the Mabel area in the Itikweni district of KwaZulu-Natal. It is situated in a densely populated area with a high unemployment rate, low socioeconomic conditions, with many patients being poverty stricken. It is found a few kilometers outside of the CBD and directly serves a population of plus 70,000 people. The Cato Manor community includes a mix of mainly African and Indian households in the township and informal settlement areas of Bonella, Cato Crest, Chesterville, Chesterville Extension, Mayville, Wiggins, and Ridge View. Now, there are many health, illness, and social issues in the area. The rates of poverty and unemployment in the area are high, as is the incidence of HIV and TB, maternal and child illness, non-communicable diseases such as hypertension and diabetes, teenage pregnancies, and GBV or gender-based violence. There is little household food security due to the high rates of poverty and un unemployment in the area, resulting in malnutrition and the need for therapeutic food supplementation. Housing infrastructure includes RDP homes and other working class households, as well as large informal settlements of shack dwellings. The issue of housing remains highly contentious in the area as new informal settlements continue to spring up. Protests over housing and municipal service delivery are a fairly common occurrence. Inadequate housing, water and sanitation are important issues that affect this community's health. COVID-19 and the recent flooding in the province has worsened these conditions as the pictures in the slide indicate. This has been a multidisciplinary project which started in 2020 
And together with a colleague, Professor Shanta Balgobin Singh, I joined in at the end of 2021, continuing with the work that had already been established. In this time, academic and medical staff have been visible at the garden, sharing their time, contributing expertise, as well as personal funds towards the maintenance of the project. Clinic staff have encouraged nutritional awareness among regular patients at the clinic who have shown a great interest in the garden and, a, and the wide range of vegetables grown here as they learned about the importance of such food items to manage chronic health conditions. Patients who have participated in the gardening itself are free to take away the vegetable grown or purchase it at a low cost. The garden has also had the presence of student interns from different disciplines and institutions participating in various forms of community service. I believe the combined efforts and goodwill of all the aforementioned stakeholders culminated in a thriving and vibrant space that inspired and uplifted many, if not all, who were engaged in its activities. In a period of nine months, we saw extensive planting and the harvesting of a range of vegetables that would support the gardeners and quite possibly their families as well. Our resident gardener, Mr. Bongani, was instrumental in the planting, as well as in assisting all of us that were involved. As you can see on the slide, the academics and the clinic personnel involved came from a, a diverse range of backgrounds, including anthropology, criminology, community medicine, nutritional science. The clinic community was made up predominantly of clinic patients and our resident gardener. Even the student interns came from a variety of different disciplines, including occupational therapy, the health sciences, social work, nutritional science. The clinic is an example of urban gardening. Urban gardening in Africa is not new, and it often includes individuals, families, or communities growing crops or keeping livestock within their plots. This is often referred to as backyard farming on rented urban land or on institutional lands, such as schools and hospitals, and in this case, the clinic. It can also include using derelict or underutilized open spaces, such as roadsides, along railway lines, under power lines, rooftops, and marshland. Of course, there are many different types of urban gardening, as you can see in the slide. I would say the best way to describe the clinic garden is that it is a combination of backyard gardening and tactical gardening, as the garden is in the backyard of the clinic premises and is a restricted space found between the clinic car park and a scrapyard, which is surrounded by electricity pylons and power lines. Gardening at the clinic is based mainly on agroecological principles of planting and resource use. Agroecology is the application of ecological principles to agricultural systems and practices concerned with increased yields while reducing harmful environmental impacts. It is increasingly important in academic and policy debates on sustainable food, farming, and land use. Agroecological approaches favor the use of natural processes, and stress the importance of local knowledge and participatory processes that develop knowledge and practice through experience, combined with more conventional methods. The garden adopts many knowledges, local knowledge, and a combination of indigenous knowledge, as well as agroecological principles. For instance, for water-saving techniques, we use perforated plastic bottles. For mulching, we use plant and waste material found at the facility. We also use discarded tires. Uh, we have raised beds and multi-crop planting. The use of resources available at the clinic is prioritized, including the waste. Patients help by bringing in vegetable and plant waste or organic matter, as well as chicken litter for compost. This is necessary as the soil at the clinic is of poor quality. Um, it is an open space, which is exposed continuously to the elements. There are many benefits of having an urban garden, and this can be clearly seen at the clinic as well. Firstly, they mobilize people and create opportunities for social connectedness and the formation of social capital, such as trust and taking collective action on matters of shared concern. For instance, or in this case, patients learn about nutritional requirements for supporting their chronic illnesses. 
Such gardens draw large numbers of visitors, volunteers, and scholars, patients, staff, academics, health science interns, who enjoy diverse benefits and so contribute to food education and learning. It is a vibrant and continuously seeks novel, sorry, it is a vibrant environment and continuously seeks novel and diverse ways to engage and develop communities and to support urban livelihoods, learning and social cohesion. It provides a space where new skills and actionable uh, knowledge can be shared and co-developed. They support improved resilience of urban and peri-urban socio-ecological systems and also the, the knowledge, the transfer of knowledge. Such gardens are open spaces that create opportunities for physical activity. It is a safe space to meet and patients have used their time and their energy, particularly during COVID in a very productive way by being part of the garden. It has also enhanced their mental health through garden therapy. The garden has provided a safe and secure space for residents and patients to interact. They promote the enjoyment of public open space and allow for an opportunity to reconnect with nature in an urban setting. Also during COVID-19, the garden also became a safe space for victims of crime in the area. So as with any community-based project, there are always challenges. I would say that our main uh, challenge was that of funding. But the gardening went on. It has a long history of um, being in the area and flourishing. And I have no doubt that it will continue to sustain itself regardless of whether there is funding or not. The ultimate goal is sustainability. Is the garden sustainable? Yes, it is. And, I can, and I'm sure that you can see from these images that um, the garden is thriving um, and will continue to do so. And that is because there are so many good hearts uh, in the clinic community. Their heart is in the right place and the focus to serve people of the clinic community is certainly there, it's certainly present. When I reflect on um, my journey or my one year stay at the garden, I, um, I have to say the following, that the success and the sustainability of the garden has been through a combined effort of various stakeholders, the clinic personnel, the resident gardeners, the patients, the interns, the academics and other visitors. While some of our objectives were met, some did not materialize. For instance, uh, my own student involvement was not possible in this time as most of our students, as you know, at UKZN have not returned to campus since the lockdown in 2020. The beauty of the garden is that each day is never the same and that there is a lot to learn about life and living in this shared space. Not only is, a site, is it a site of great learning, but also a site of resistance. For marginalized communities living a precarious existence, the act of gardening is not only a form of agency, but also a struggle against the social and economic marginalization that led to ill health and insecure access to food. In my year of working alongside clinic staff and gardeners, I have experienced much joy and deep learning. Beyond people, the garden has a life of its own. In my role supporting the maintenance and sustainability of the garden, I was able to observe and engage with diverse individuals and witness larger social dynamics play out in a small living, breathing, growing space, a microcosm of society. At this point, I would like to acknowledge and express my sincere appreciation to CEO Maureen Mkees, Ms. Toko Mtembu, Sister Peters, the clinic gardeners, and most of all to Mr. Bongani, for their support during my term at the garden. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Geraldine Doganas for that um, presentation. Um, I just need to apologize. Um, I'm the facilitator for this panel and um, when it started, I was still outside. So um, apologies for that. My name is Dr. Cherry Muslim. I am the um, acting academic leader for the School of Religion and Philosophy and Classics. Um, and we will continue with our panel. So our second person who will be up today, oops, sorry, is um, Professor Angela James. 
she is the academic leader for the for community engagement um, and the associate professor in science education in the School of Education, Professor James. Is my presentation here? Yeah. Uh, but I don't have to wait for it. I'm quite sure. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And thank you for being here. Um, and one of the things that, that I really want to say is that, um, yes, we are discussing counselors and we're discussing people ultimately. Um, I do want to say um, that we must all recognize ourselves yeah, as leaders. That's all I want to say. And I could say that maybe that's my only sentence that I want to make in this presentation is that we are all leaders. Um, and when we sit back and we wait for somebody else to lead, then who are you in that particular process? Okay, thank you. Okay, stop there. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. So, so we've, we've greeted everybody and, um, you know, earlier on when Mr, let me just get his name right, Mr. Siobonga Ntombela started his presentation, I said, damn, he's stealing my presentation. Why? Because he spoke and he mentioned two words, needs and desire. And then he mentioned another word, want. Now, if, if we think about it, we are all living within communities. And it does not matter. And maybe you could argue with me and say, but it does matter. It does not matter where your community is. What you have to think about is who are you? within that particular community. And when he mentioned the word needs, I did cringe. And the reason why I cringe when the word need is um, used, it's a low level thing. We're not aspiring to anything much more than just give me what I need. And when, when I'm working with students and in the class, when I say to them, list your needs, oh, they'll give you a long list. List your desires. What's that? So how do we change our language and how do we change our perspective with regard to who we are within a community, engaging with community members, and then exploring their desires, not their needs. And if we start working at a higher level and we take into consideration that every person is a leader, then we have to start thinking differently about what it is and how is and why is our communities the way they are? So now I have a challenge. I can't, how am I going to make it go? It's not going. <laughs> yes, I know how to do all that. I'm doing all of that and it's not going. Oh, my, oh, there we, oh, that's another arrow. <laughs> there, <you are. laughs> thank you. Okay, so I want you to focus on all those questions. What, who, why, where, when, and others. And you could say to me, oh, just give us a presentation. No. You see, if we regard other people as leaders and people that we are engaging with as leaders, then they are thinkers as well. And I'm not here to give you my thoughts that you must now go and take and go and implement. So you are a thinker, you are a creator. 
And I think when we start working from that philosophical basis about how communities engage and the word is with, it is essentially important that our communities can and are different places. So we must start imagining this desire and what the communities could be looking like. Because if we're only interested in just providing the basic services, then we lost. We are surely lost. And I do understand that in many communities, the basic services are not even there. So as, as a role for all of us to work with, we need to understand that we have perspectives. So you woke up this morning, and when you woke up, you were obviously in your place, wherever your place may be, and you were among people, the community that you were among. What are some of, now I have to think of how I'm going to say this word very carefully, what are some of the happenings within your community? You've got 30 seconds, list them quickly. What are some of the happenings within your community? 30 seconds, you should be writing or listing in your head something. Okay, so, so can I ask for responses from two people? Just two people. And maybe I should ask the panel. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, so there were two that came up. Security, riots. And you spoke about public riots. This is our community. From Monday, I've been reading stories about what's been happening at schools. I just wanted to cry because that is the seat of where our future citizens are being engaged and it's not safe. So notice the two responses were linked to violence. So when we start thinking about this and we start unpacking what is this violence that we talk about? And we go back to those questions. How, why, where, when? I loved the really the, the presentations that came earlier on because there were so many words that came out of that. I mean, the word Ubuntu, yes, I also question that all the time. Participation, what does that mean? For whom, by whom, how? So, so, you know, we could make it such a theoretical thing. And yet, it's the practical engagement with communities that has to be specialized. And it's engagement with communities for enhancement. I do not use the word empowered anymore. It's got too many slanted connotations. But for enhancement. Who decides what that enhancement is going to be? Well, that is something where we as the community will decide. So when we're looking at perspective, we have to consider how something appears is always a matter of perspective. And it's beautiful when we hear in a discussion how there are communities that sit together and discuss, not fight. Yes, you can fight verbally, no swear words, <laughs> although I can swear now and again, but anyway, you can fight verbally, not physically. So, so how do we engender 
that type of communication, that type of thinking, and that type of action among our communities. And when I say that we are leaders, even a three-year-old child is a leader. So as a community member, how do we value the growth of that particular child? Or when that child falls, we laugh when that child is crying. Or do we cradle that child and actually start tendering and caring for the child? So the whole aspect of care is something that we really need to stress and we need to understand. I mean, I could stand up here and speak about all the different things we do in the School of Education, but that was not um, important at this point. What, what we also need to understand is that in working with communities, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, are essentially important. There's a lot of critique also about these Sustainable Development Goals because where do they come from? What is the context in which these 17 goals are actually developed? Is it only from the north or is it from the north, the south, the east, the west? And how inclusive is it with regard to the goals and the outcomes that um, are being looked at? So in working with communities, an understanding of these goals is critically important. And I do not mean an understanding from going through the theory, the deep theory of it, no. But looking at what the different goals are. Number four, quality education. Number one is poverty. Number 17, partnerships. Number five, gender equality. So when we look at these sustainable development goals and we are engaging with one another, it should not be that the goals decide how we engage but the goals could be the opportunities and the possibilities for the enhancement with our communities. And remember that within a particular community, quality education may mean something completely different within another community. I'll give you an example. Last week, Friday, it's obviously spring now, and the Green Club at a particular school in Claremont, I was the guest speaker there, and it was beautiful, really meaningful to experience the Enviro Club, the type of work they're doing within that school, the extensive planting that is taking place, the awareness about the environment that is happening. And how did all that start? Concerned teachers. So at the same time, we all need to understand that we all have a role, no matter where you are located as well. So within our School of Education, we have a community engagement has a tagline. Engaging with communities, we all grow. Oh, that's very small. Sorry, you know, I'm the teacher. It should be larger. We all grow. How can we grow with you? And what's very important, there's a spider here, and it's actually quite interesting that it's crawling around, and it's, it's, just, it's just in nature. Uh, but, but it's not its place here anyway. Um, so engaging with communities, we all grow. How can we grow with you? And the picture there is of the school children from the very school that I spoke about in Claremont who have started this massive garden. And just two days ago, they sent pictures of the spinach and the cabbages that they are now reaping from that particular garden. So it's not only about gardens, but it's about, and I love your example within the community, it's about that range of personal, community, knowledge and skills, values that is being engaged with. I do not want to say developed, but is being engaged with. And therefore the word grow is how we look at whatever it is that we are doing.
And within the School of Education, there are so many different organizations um, and groups that we work with. And what is very important is that each of them are involved with education in some way or the other. I was going to, I actually made a list and I was going to mention some of them, but then if I leave some out, you know, it's not that I'm prioritizing some and not the others, but I just want to say that contact me. We, we work with so many groups of people, local, nationally, and also internationally. And then we have to think about when we speak about grow, what are we growing? The whole person. And how do we grow that whole person? By engaging with you. And then you could say, well, give us the template of how you do it. I cannot. That will be decided in the context in which that actually is taking place. Because the people present are the people who will decide how. Most importantly, firstly, why? Because if people cannot see the essence of why they should grow and what that growth entails, then what? So we teach service learning, research and service learning in the School of Education. And I'm telling you at the beginning of that module, the students are saying, I want to deregister, I want to deregister. And I say, sit there, take five minutes and think about your decision because I'm not signing your form. They come back the third time, then I'll say, okay, I'll sign. But for those who have gone on, are amazed by their own potential that they never ever knew they possessed. So what are we doing with our students, our learners, our community members, if we are not exploring and engaging them in discovering their potentials and them being thinkers and creators for a better desired community. I want us to stop with this. And I'm just being corny putting it there, but yeah. Which step have you reached today? And I think we need to consider this. So many times we'll, we'll be at that first step, I won't do it so many times. And it's only when you decide that I'll try to do it. Can you see how many steps you go up before you get to, I'll try to do it? To yes, I did it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor James, for that um, presentation. We will be moving on to, is the um, online participant here? We'll be moving on to our third speaker, and that is Dr. Hershela Narsi. Um, she is currently an independent consultant on education and training in South Africa, and is a ministerial appointee on the Council of the KwaZulu-Natal Community Education and Training College. And today she will be commenting um, on her participation in the Gandhi Community Project. Thank you. Dr. Nasi, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, good day, rather. Good day to you, program director, and all protocol observed. Uh, may I just inquire whether you are able to see my presentation? No, not as yet. We can only see you. Um, let me just try again. It says share screen and I put it on. Okay, go so, share screen and then click on whatever it is that you're wanting to share and then click on the bottom where it says share again. One second. Um, sorry for this delay. Oh, 
Okay, now? No, it's still not. We can only see you. Um, can I ask somebody to help me? Yes. Okay, do you have your presentation open? Uh, yes, I do have my presentation open. Okay, can you see the share screen button? Uh, sorry, I can't hear you very well. Can you, can you see the share screen button? Yes, I have, uh, I have um, clicked on the share screen button. What do you see? Yeah, it all comes up again. Um, so I've shared, I've clicked on the share screen button. Yes, what do and, you see? Okay, let me do this. Okay, I've clicked on this. And then it puts all whatever files I've got on there. And Let's then select the presentation that you want to share. Okay. I've selected it. I've selected it. And then share. Um, and then I've clicked again on, oh, there's a share, right, okay. Sorry, that. Are Can you, you see it now? Uh, yes, it's coming. Yeah. Yes, we can see it now, but it's, um, if you can click on the um, little button in on the bottom that allows you to have a slideshow. So it's the um, one, two, three, the fourth little icon from the left at the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Come down to the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Down to the bottom, go all the way to the left. I'm sorry, to the right. Mm, okay. and right. Go along, go along. Next one, next one. Next, no, no, to the right. Go to the right, that one, yes. Okay. All right. right. Thank Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much uh, to you for the opportunity to present on, on the work that we are doing at the Phoenix Settlement. Uh, which is a national heritage site. And this is a wonderful opportunity to share this. The themes that you have selected for your event really speak so strongly to the work we are doing. So I'll start quickly with the background <clears throat> to say that this Gandhi Development Project is based at a national heritage site, which is called the Phoenix Settlement. Now the word Phoenix is a bit of a misnomer because it's not really in Phoenix. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually in Bombay, uh, uh, which is in Inanda. And um, it's often called the Gandhi Settlement, this National Heritage Site. And the Gandhi Settlement is part of the Inanda Heritage Trail, which is closely linked to um, John Dube's uh, Oshlanga Institute, the Shembe Church, and the Inanda Seminary. I'm sure all of you are familiar with those. So as mentioned, the, the site, the Gandhi settlement is located in the midst of a largely informal settlement called Bombay in Inanda. The site attracts numerous national and international tourists. And these tourists are taken on guided tours on the site by a tour operator who is employed by the Itegueli City Council, as well as the trustees of the Phoenix Settlement. Now, the Phoenix Settlement is basically a large piece of land on which there are several historical buildings. The one being Gandhi's original home, uh, a museum on, on the work of Gandhi, a crash, a drop-in clinic, and the printing press from which Gandhi had published his newspapers at the time. So the Phoenix settlement is linked to the nonviolent struggle for liberation against colonialism and apartheid. It was actually there since the 1800s, uh, 1900s rather. And um, so it's very, very old. The settlement is very old. And so it was from there that the fight against colonialism uh, by Mahatma Gandhi had been initiated and he collaborated with others against this. And then subsequently was the fight against apartheid. So the settlement has got both national as well as international significance. 
because it's part of Gandhi's legacy and it's part of the international movement on alternatives to violence. Now, <clears throat> in the community in which the settlement is located, there are a range of problems. Uh, we know these because of our engagements with the community. And most of these problems are actually ones that are similar to other communities elsewhere. Unemployment, poverty, gender-based violence, crime, general crime. Inanga is known to have one of the highest murder rates in South Africa and gender-based violence incidentally. Drugs, teenage pregnancy, lack of proper housing and services such as water, electricity, and general environmental degradation. There's a lack of proper roads, dirt is piled up everywhere. The river which runs close to the settlement called the Pisang River is weighed down with dirt, etc. So this is the community in which the settlement is located. Now, what is the role of the heritage site in this context? And the role would be, we see it as firstly to attract visitors. And by attracting visitors, we then draw attention to, to the area. Because by, you know, when you get visitors at home, we sort of tend to um, um, clean up our houses better. So it's the same idea. You get visitors from all over the world and you also get national visitors. And then the idea is to draw attention to prioritize development. And this is where your ward counselor comes in because then the fact that there's a heritage site there is a key um, incentive to prioritize development around the heritage site. Now, the whole role of the heritage site also is to create employment. Now, it can do so both directly and indirectly. So directly, it's by employing people on the heritage site itself. And indirectly, it's that by attracting visitors, we create, uh, have an effect, a positive effect on the economy and uh, thereby creating employment elsewhere. And the site also is there to serve as an oasis in the midst of a lot of negativity. So there's uh, the issue of peace building and so on. And then the role of the site is to provide services and undertake community development and empowerment. That's how we understand the role of the site. If you have alternative ideas, we we'll appreciate to hear them. So the vision of the heritage site is to provide an internationally acclaimed center for learning and for transmitting the ideas of Mahatma Gandhi of a peaceful, just, and nonviolent world. That's the message that we want to send. And our goals are there to preserve, maintain, develop, and promote the settlement as a national heritage site. It's to establish a social compact with the local community in order to achieve the above. And it's to promote Gandhian values. Now, when one talks about a social compact, and the, the idea of a social compact goes back centuries. And it has been recently adopted by the government to address the crisis of unemployment in the country. And many heritage sites also establish social compacts with the surrounding community as part of the preservation of the heritage site. Now, the idea for social compact is that it calls for increased cooperation and trust between parties with a view to conserving that which benefits all parties. So it's about the matter of trust between those who are managing the heritage site and the surrounding communities. And it's about having trust between them and to have cooperation between the two parties so that the site is preserved and the community is empowered in a way so that both parties benefit. 
We are of the view that the settlement could be observed through a social compact that supports and empowers the local community. Now, what do we do as part of our social compact? We provide community support services. We undertake training and development or empowerment, but we also undertake community outreach or welfare type interventions. So if we look at the services that we provide, the first is the internet cafe. We have an internet cafe where people come to, to access the internet, to print documents, to scan documents, email them, to have their CVs done. And so it's a very important service because it's very expensive for people to go elsewhere to get these things done. There's also a crash on the settlement. It's managed by a community member and it's supported by the Provincial Department of Social Development. There's a clinic also managed independently by a community member and supported by the Provincial Department of Social Department Development and a Dev Department of Health. And we also provide information and advice to individual community members on how to access IDs, how they can get birth certificates done, how they can access different kinds of grants, how they can access the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, how they can access the Unemployment Insurance Fund from the Department of Labor, etc. So these are the, we provide that kind of information and advice to people who sort of walk into the, um, the site. And we also have a service, which is we provide after school support and a reading club at the center. <clears throat> then the second round of stuff that we do as part of our social compact is on training as well as development. So the training we do is on computer literacy. We have a certificated program uh, that certificates people on Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Uh, it's a basic uh, two week program. Uh, then we have a work seeker support program. We know how expensive it is for people to seek work. We know what happens when people get uh, disillusioned because they can't find work. And um, so what we have is the support program. And what we do is help to register youth on work seeker platforms. Uh, to this end, we partner with Harambi, with the Department of Employment and Labor, and we support young people to register on uh, SA Youth Mobi and on the Employment Services for South Africa database of the Department of Employment and Labor, so that uh, young people can um, register on it. They can also use the sites to develop their CVs. Um, and um, it's no guarantee for work, but it means they do not have to travel out for work. Now, these two uh, sites are not, on, not the only sites. There are about 10 other websites that um, we link uh, youngsters to for them to register. Then we also have um, regular career information day. In fact, let's put it this way. We had the first one this year where we had a career information day for out of school youth. We had this in partnership with the local municipality uh, in um, the ABM, the um, area-based management group of the local municipality. And we had over 200 youth attending it. So we provided information, not only about possible work options, uh, opportunities, but also about occupations that young people could possibly take up, about uh, entrepreneurship, about developing entrepreneurship so that people could find work for themselves. And also for lifelong learning opportunities for post-school education and training opportunities. So that's, that's the kind of stuff we provide information on. We have um, a program on environment and the focus is on waste management and the cleaning up of the river. We're working with the area-based management team of the city council on that one, but it's very complex. It's very hard to do. 
because they are so many stakeholders and we would really like to engage with the councillor on this one. Then the issue of fire safety and we have training programs on that. Again, with the collaboration with the city council, we have prevention workshops, control workshops, because we've had a lot of fires in the area. In fact, we had a fire in December last year, and then we had another fire again in July in the surrounding area. Um, vegetable gardening, uh, we've got fortunately this space uh, on the settlement, and we have a hands-on program at the settlement. We train people, but we also do the actual gardening. <clears throat> We've got a program on social cohesion, especially after the aftermath of the July 2021 violence. We see social cohesion as key. And uh, in fact, this year in June, we had a workshop with youth from Bombay and Phoenix, the nearby area of Phoenix, uh, so that um, um, you know, people could share their experiences on race relations. <laughs> Um, then women leadership is considered a big item on our program. We've trained 20 women to date on women leadership. On GBV, we've had a lot of information sessions. And then on the COVID-19 vaccine, we've collaborated with the South African Council of Churches, uh, where we've provided information of the vaccine, about the vaccine, uh, to the community, and we've also undertaken a survey uh, with the, of the community around their perspectives on the vaccine. Then in terms of our community outreach program, we've identified 65 families uh, together with the clinic and the creche um, to uh, identify who, who are indigent, and we provide monthly food parcels to them. Um, and whenever there's an emergency like fires or floods and so on, we always help wherever we can. Uh, so it's, we provide food parcels to that. Now in the case of the families affected by fires and floods, we've provided food parcels or we've facilitated other organizations to provide either hot meals or groceries. We've provided blankets for those affected by the floods. In fact, the day after the floods, we ensured that the um, families surrounding the uh, had blankets, we provide school uniforms, stationery, and we've managed to accommodate a few families who were affected by the floods. And then we've also provided support to the victims of the July violence. We've provided uh, counseling, medical support, and we've had listening sessions facilitated by Bishop Varane on those who were affected by the violence. We have partnerships with a wide range of organizations. Our city council is our main partner. We partner with religious organizations on a wide range of events and activities. Other NPOs like the, uh, um, the um, heritage, you know, yeah, other heritage councils, uh, DSDDL, I mentioned anti corruption groups, anti poverty groups, universities like DUT, UKZN, etc. So we are part of the service learning forum that um, Angela manages uh, together with the council. Our resources are basically the chair of our trustees, who's Ila Gandhi. I've, I've given her apologies. She was supposed to present today, and uh, but she's not well. And she's Gandhi's granddaughter, so a very historical, very significant figure. She coordinates and initiates most of the programs. Then on the site itself, we have a manager of the site, and uh, he's also the computer trainer. We have the manager of the internet cafe and an administrator. And then we have one intern, it's a part-time volunteer. We have part-time cleaning staff, part-time accountant, the board of trustees and advisors and funds from donors. And until February 22nd, uh, for February this year, the ETEGWENI Council was providing us with some funding. 
so that is basically who we have. We would like to, we need more people to assist because we would like to do much more work, uh, but we just don't have enough people to undertake all of our activities. Now, our principles are there to ensure that the services are aligned with the community needs. And I heard the talk by Siabonga and Tombela talking about um, what we understand by community needs. So that was quite enlightening. Um, our objective is, our principle is that we like to integrate theory with practice. We'd like to re reflect critically on our interventions. That's our, our principle is that we must critically reflect on our interventions. We need to ensure that our interventions are sustainable. Um, we endorse the principle of non-violence. Um, the principles of human dignity, human rights, equity, non-racialism, non-sexism, and the acceptance and promotion of religious and cultural diversity. And we espouse the principles of truth, compassion, the need for responsibility, honesty, integrity, fairness is very important, commitment and simplicity. And we like to partner and work in teams with like-minded individuals and organizations. Now I want to share this with you because we, the university is an audience here. Um, we, because of our reflective uh, principle on reflection, we find the need to um, engage constantly with communities to assess whether we are doing the right thing. So we have undertaken a number of small surveys and we have collected information on about four things, but we do not have the capacity to collate and analyze the data and prepare reports because the volunteer that we did have has left. The volunteer was supposed to help us with this. So for example, we conducted a survey of 65 of our beneficiaries uh, to find out whether there is still a need for them to um, receive the food parcels because we hear from local community organizations that there are other families who uh, need these food parcels, grocery parcels to be exact. And then we had undertaken a survey of just like about 100 and some odd community members, members uh, to uh, assess, assess the extent of the vaccination and vaccination and attribution Vaccination, vaccination, and uh, our work, our work, um, is a monitor we which we use as a monitoring tool, as a monitoring tool, and, and we got data on the evaluation of our career, evaluation of our career in uh, We had taken a survey of victims of the violence, victims of the violence of July last year. And, and, and we repeated that survey yeah. and the reporting has been, report has been We would like we would to do a needs analysis, analysis in Bombay. In Bombay. Because we would like to know because we would like what are the needs what of communities, of what interventions to come interventions to come in. We also wanted to include the social economic uh, component. component and uh, we hope that we can use the census 2021 data one to help us to, uh, to do this to do uh, research. Uh, research. Uh, sorry, I just want to know, are you able to hear me or is there a echo? Can hear you. All right. So um, if you can conclude in the next couple of minutes, Okay, okay. okay. Thank, you. thank you. In terms of our opportunities to partner with the university, with the university uh, we uh, would really like to, um, we think that we can partner with UKZN if UKZN is willing to. And that is why we're so excited about this event. Is that, are you able that to work with us? Able to work with us, us to need to come by? Um, including the socio-economic survey. Economic survey. We hope that you hope can partner 
know, with us to no. promote social cohesion, um, with neighboring uh, communities, bring communities, and then to help us to monitor, in monitoring, to help us to analyze data and um, and then we thought that if we participate in supporting internship programs for masters and PhD students at the settlement, settlement the students could be based there and they could also work on our projects. Projects. Um, you could organize staff and student visits to the site. The site. We could do it jointly. Okay. Uh, undertake research on clinic settlement. There are many yeah. international scholars who are interested in the clinic settlement and this could be with the and we could collaborate on the development of qualifications for the training of heritage practitioners like on postgraduate diplomas masters in museum and heritage studies etc so we could collaborate on these things then with regards to the local councillor we'd really like to participate with the local council on environmental cleanup which is at the end of this month for the Bombay area, to undertake a sustainable environment waste management program together with the councillor to support local community development, to communicate a message that the community should be proud of the legacy of having a, a national site there, and then to engage with local community organizations on service delivery and other issues, especially housing, water, electricity. Now, the Phoenix Settlement has also been nominated to be an international UNESCO heritage site by the National Association of, national, of African American Studies and Affiliates, NAS. And the South African government has not placed uh, the settlement on the tentative list for consideration by UNESCO as yet, uh, but uh, we've still got to submit additional information we believe that having UNESCO heritage site in Inanda will help uplift the image of the community and support the local and provincial economy. And we hope that you could support us in this regard. And here are some pictures about the team. Um, we have meetings to get to know the neighbors, our gardening project here, um, the book club, the launch of our book club, which we have. Um, you, you can see these learners at the table. These are the book club learners. And these are the 20 women who were trained on the leadership program. Thank you so much, very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Narsi, for your presentation. Um, just so that we can have um, could, you, could you stop sharing so that we could um, show her? Thank you. Right. Um, I know we are running a little bit late. We did start about half an hour late. We're finishing off now. Um, but we still have a, another speaker for this panel. At, Bear with us for just a, a little while longer um, until we come to the end of the session. So our next will be Professor Busisiwe Nkoki Manjleni. Um, she is the Direct Engagement and Development Directorate at the Mangasutu University of Technology. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not, I don't like podiums because I am altitudinally <laughs> challenged for the lack of a better word. So I don't do podiums at all. Say it on. Okay. Sure. You see, already I'm not visible there for some reason. Can we put it? Okay. I am going to share with the audience. In fact, the first thing I asked from a doc, 
Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you so much for inviting MUT. Thank you so much also for recognizing what we're doing uh, at MUT. Uh, so the first thing that I inquired from her is the audience. <laughs> Who is going to be here? And then I was told having counselors. And then I tried my best to tailor make the presentation uh, to the to the counselors. Okay. So quickly, my presentation long is going to be short. Uh, it's just about the background. I will share with you brief university. Uh, and also share with you what do we do at the, at the university. I mean, complete engage. Uh, how, what is our focus areas? The principles that govern complete engagement at MUT partnerships, which I think is what uh, the audience wants to hear. So I'm going to be more on partnerships, and then I'll just give you briefly um, the examples of pro engaging in. And then I'll conclude my uh, presentation. So background MUT is a university that is based in Umlazi. It's not moving. Um, it was established in 1979. It was established as so a technicon, and then it grew. Which one? Uh, you can see where it is uh, situated. We are right at gas. Universities we have in South Africa that are at gas. So are uh, privileged because by warm people, Abantu Basekasi are very, very warm. Hence, we are also told that we have inherited it from ECAS. So this is where our university is, uh, University of Technologies. Uh, we've got a student enrollment of about 15,000. But when we see 79, all that time, I don't want to uh, disclose my age, but uh, sitting there, he was my classmate. We we're doing great uh, 10 standard eight together. He was far back while I was sitting at the first row of the class. So you can disclose my age, but you can imagine how old I am. Uh, the vision of the university, share it, is to be a transforming, uh, equitable, sustainable, and academically excellent technology anchored in his communities. The reason why I decided to underline anchored is um, we as the university decided to develop a specific strategy that's being an anchored university. We are anchored in our communities. We are not just the communities uh, in Umlazi community, but we are anchored. How are we anchored? So we need to have a syndicate that we're anchored. It means we need to work with our communities. We need to recognize them. We need to make them come to the university. We need to be an inclusive university. We also need to be willing and share the expertise that we have with the communities. And at the same time, be willing to listen to our cause. The communities also have a knowledge. They've got the indigenous knowledge. So it be just a university in a township, which is more like an ivory tower, which does not have anything to do with the surrounding community. So we do have an anchor strategy in our university through to, to point by point. Um, again, as part of our mission statement, quite a long mission statement, you can read it there. But what I want you to zoom into is that as a statement, we want to be to want to engage with our communities. And at MUNITY is the civil society, that is the NGOs, the NPOs, and so CPOs, faith-based organizations. It is also the industry. 
the reason why we make our communities the industry is because we want a place where we can place our students for work integrated learning. And at the same time, we also want to have as uh, some funding that they give to us because you all know that community engagement is a mandate in however it is not funded at all so we the the, the industry is also our community and departments is also our community so that is how we define our communities and then communities as end users that is the ordinary people it is also a uh, involved mutually a beneficial relationship beneficial mutual beneficial we say that we need to when we engage with our communities we need to benefit them um, the university has to benefit from the communities because at the end of the day to teach our students a curriculum that is relevant it means the curriculum is a um, that, that speaks to, to, to the needs of our communities. So that is very, very mutual beneficiation is very, very important. So through community engagement, UT serves uh, Umlazi and the surrounding communities. In other words, uh, looking at Umlazi community, but we also go uh, outside the Umlazi. Now, how do we define community engagement at MUT? We say it is a scholarly activity of research that encompasses all planned activities that the university and the communities engage with an aim of improving social economic conditions of targeted communities while presenting for the university to enhance its teaching and learning and research uh, capacities. As a university, as part of the strategy, we have made a conscious decision to excel in community engagement. We have made a conscious decision. We said we excel. As a result, excellence in community engagement is goal three of MUT. So anyone who is a community member, the, the, our, the students, the lecturers, staff, they know that as the university, it is our goal to excel in engagement. And another, the, the, the objectives that are underlying uh, the goal three uh, is uh, just two objectives, which I would love to share with you contribute to the social, economical, cultural uh, 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 um, enhancement of our communities, and also to enhance our relationships with the communities, and then to increase partnerships, which I think is what uh, everyone wants to hear. This engagement, I'm going to do a flyby shooting uh, when I explain this for the service learning. It means our students uh, go out there to the communities through serving community protocols, whereby we approach the counselors uh, and also Abba Party Bom Dabu, that is tra tra traditional authorities, so that they can a service by fike by caesar umpagati and at the same time magati kukona into a by fundayo so that is service learning they save and something out of that August Bini, we do it in the form of community outreach those ones of activities whereby we just go there a, 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 to, to our Mandela Day. But if we say out, outreach, we we'll, we'll also go there intentionally. I see just because in Mandela Day, nobody up or day, a way of paving our way to the community, to warm the community so that at the end, observe what is in the community, how, and then we can start our conversations so age with them further. But the entry point here too is the outreach. So it's not a pit and run, 
but we make sure that we do it so that you can negotiate um, NSS. We also do community-based research. We also do student volunteerism. Our students uh, is, um, voluntarily without expecting it uh, to, to be, to, to, and then we also do community development. So that is basically the scope of a uh, community engagement at MUT. Um, we are also governed by principles uh, which uh, also appear in our policy. By the way, also have a policy for community engagement. Uh, we do have a pol university policy that is approved by the Senate, uh, which speaks to how, which speaks to community engagement. The first one is social resp uh, responsibility. In other words, the knowledge a university community has, meaning which the lecturers, uh, they must share it uh, with the community and translate it to, to, to address development challenges. And also, you know, communities, some communities are socially excluded for various reasons. Both there as university to, to share that information with those communities, uh, we call that a social responsibility, reciprocity and equality. We need to uh, uh, um, treat our communities as, I know we're not equal with our communities, because we are professors and doctors and whatever. Uh, when it comes to the principles for community engagement, we need to that uh, we treat them uh, at that level of equality because they do have what we do not have. Engagements, this one is very critical because this one does, um, we might not even be poor about ethical engagement because universities, we are so popular in extracting information from the communities without even going back to the, the outcomes or, or the findings of the research. So we make sure that at MUT, we age with our communities. Even before we engage with them, we seek for permission. Can we talk? We cannot just go and say, you have a problem as community so-and-so. No. It means we don't have the respect for the community. It means we do not as humans. It means we are dehumanizing them now because we know it is. So ethical engagement, permission, protocols, my three colleagues from MUT that are sitting with me, one of them is a community liaison officer. He goes so that he can be able to, to seek permission for us to. He also knows the doors where he can knock he, uh, to the traditional counselors, the um, uh, 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 traditional authorities and also to the counselors. So ethical engagement is critical. That is mean we we'll, we'll make sure that we work together with our communities and last sustainability, meaning which our they should uh, bring lasting impact on the communities. And then one other principle just recently is the principle of transformation. It means when we engage as in communities, we need to get into a, 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 another level of engagement brings transformation uh, to the community. But at the same time, when we talk about transformation, not only transforming the community itself so that it can be able to do things on its own, empowering it, at the same time, we should also transform the way we teach as, a, a, as, as academic staff members. So it uh, both ways. Now coming to the critical slide with his uh, partnerships at MUT, these are the cornerstone for all community engagement projects. So they uh, help each other. As I indicated earlier on, we do not have a uh, funding at the universities. So we need to come together so that we can leverage uh, to carry out community engagement projects. So there is no way we can do engagement project 
without bringing in partners on board and partners from all uh, organizations that like they have uh, listed there, the civil society uh, nationally, and also we even go abroad to the international organizations for partnerships. Uh, partnerships, we take them very seriously in because it, it, they are endorsed by the VC of the university, partnership with a Teguin municipality, and uh, we also part as partnership, uh, we, we take part in the service learning for which takes place every, every week, every Wednesday. So I've met some of you uh, virtually talk about how uh, to, to share best, pra best practices uh, regarding community engagement. We also go through um, various platforms, partnership we have engagement activities uh, such as workshops, colloquia, seminar community engagement days in Bezos, round tables, discussions, meetings, and other relevant discourses. So what happens is that after we establish this formal partnership so that we keep our partners warm, we need to make sure that we continuously have an engagement all the time. Right now, towards the end of this year, we'll be having um, a, a partnership, a, a, a we, call, we usually call it at MUT, round table discussions. Hear from them if they are happy with the partnership, if they are happy with what we are seeing. And at the same time, we also want to pave a uh, the uh, way forward. Now, particular slide, I'm just going to share with you uh, uh, the best practice regarding uh, partnerships. What we usually do is that if there is a, 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 a check that needs to be done, we just cannot say we allow a project to be under ensuring that there is a a problem that has been identified. Uh, so it means as an office, which is a community engagement and development directorate, uh, most posted by lecturing staff members, they will come to our offices and say, uh, we want to uh, carry out a specific project, pro project, community engagement project. So the first is, uh, have you identified any problem? Have you identified that problem? That problem, who did you identify it with? Did you make an assumption that there is in that community? Or did you sit with the community stakeholders and establish the, if there is a real a problem? So that problem identification will assist the academy so that they understand that uh, when we identify a problem, we don't do it the way we do search. The problem identification is done uh, uh, together with the, with the control that there is a, a, pro a problem. So the project leaders, as is indicated that the, um, it could be academic staff member, or, or a student, but as per the policy for MA, we usually encourage that it becomes the lecturing staff members. Sometimes we know our students, have got to, they love to go out there and uh, help out the communities. But the challenge with the students is that not last in the system. Once they finish, they have to leave. And then there are some promises that they have missed that they leave them and not fulfilled. So it's very important that it becomes a lecturing staff member who does that problem identification together with them, with the communities. And then with conceptualization and then followed by needs and analysis. I'm not going to go into detail because there was a vision uh, on needs analysis. And then once we are sure as a directorate that a problem and there is a need for that project to, to take place, then we allow the, the, 
the staff member to register a project with us uh, and then it becomes before it becomes registered we need to vet again so we do have a vetting committee uh, which vet the, the, the projects and then because we need to also check uh, if it, it speaks to sustainable development goals and also it speaks to the national development plan does it also speak to our focus areas as the university because we also have some focus areas as the university as per the community engagement implementation strategy and thereafter we go on and i take the stakeholders as i indicated earlier on with the project leaders and them um, and compatibilize an officer so that we go and do a um, stakeholder uh, partnerships with co communities. We leave our offices and go and sit down with the communities so that we can establish a bad particular project. Once we see the buy that there is a buy-in in that particular community, we can start implementing the project and we monitor it, we evaluate it. Uh, so that do now what happens is that a project usually has a lifespan and we make sure that a uh, it is uh, fully uh, uh, monitored and once it comes to an end we make sure that is it does not die in that particular community we encourage uh, that it uh, it is handed over to a, a, a some civil society, some organization that with the project for this, for the purpose of sustainability. And then as I indicated, a partnership with a municipality, but I see a potential for Alka so that we can be able to access the, 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 the communities. These are just the of, um, projects that I'm talking about. If you can see the first picture, we, we were at Imbil, it doesn't work. That is me who's wearing a blue jacket there. We were really trying that everybody is on board uh, regarding a community engagement that was um, by a office technology department. We can see that we do have a councillors there, both from the traditional side and also from the from the from it from it. So we established a, a partnership there, and uh, that project uh, went very well. Because there was a buy-in from the partners. Uh, this is another example. Twenty twenty, I think it was twenty nineteen when MUT was celebrating forty years. One week project. It took us the whole week to celebrate forty years at MUT, and we brought councillors uh, from Wards eighty eight and eighty seven. Uh, this is the late the VC on the left. And then the TV is on the right. In the middle, this is a, one of the councillors. We were on board uh, because we wanted to show that as a university, when we celebrate, as when we celebrate our milestones, they are also part of the celebration. And at the same time that we are a, a caring university. And this is another uh, slide. This is one is, um, I think the topic is wrong there. Uh, celebrating a Mandela Day at a, a school at a, 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 We brought on board a different stakeholders. You can see the blue, the, or the right um, people with the blue uh, overalls from a tech municipality. There were a lot of it uh, initiated on that day, a school garden, landscaping, a library in the school, a, 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 a soccer, a soccer uh, ground. And then the other year, and then the other year, we also encouraged uh, the, the skin communities. Even this one, we did it through the ward councillors. And you can see the communities can uh, to learn some skills. But the good thing about this picture is that this, but they didn't get it from us. 
as the university. We identified other communities that have got the skills and, and requested if they could share their skills with the other communities. So that is how it happened. You can see pit work there and a flower arrangement. And they did that without being paid. And then after that, I think it was a, a month later, we brought the same community to MUT to learn some skills for a follow-up session so that we can progress. Because there was also a class on entrepreneurship and we learned that they, because of the skills that they, they attained from, from the university. We uh, worked with Ward 88 uh, when we were trying to be responsive to, to COVID uh, by offering groceries and, um, and, uh, and uh, seedlings. And then we also partnered uh, with um, uh, some civil called Opavo, which takes care of uh, about four wards uh, where we're distributing uh, food and clothing uh, to, be, to try to respond. And also we partnered with the gift of the givers uh, so that you can make sure you know foods. And uh, lastly, I just want to share with you the projects and in pipeline. As part of the ENCA strategy, we have a, a picture of Omlazi. Uh, it is in the pipeline because we are still at the initial project to recover lost history and also the importance of its of the restoration of the restoration of the history of Mlazi. So what we do here, we promote um, the history of Mlazi and also encourage um, projects that um, uh, make youth to know who they are, the identities through families and so on and so forth. And then we also have a conference that is, I've thought Dr. Prof. Angela James was gonna talk about it. It is also in the pipe. It will also be about uh, the history of Umlazi. We're also looking at having arts in Umlazi so that we can be able to appreciate the talent have in Umlazi. And in conclusion, I just want to say that teaching research make more meaning when communities are involved. We just cannot a university that teaches and, and that uh, conducts research without communities are involved. And then second, community engagement remains in, in promoting social economic advancement of communities. Uh, the reason why I'm saying it principle is because community engagement does not seem to be popular. Uh, maybe new, uh, but it has been there for quite some time now, but it does not guarantee that it's supposed to receive uh, when we can compare it with teaching. Uh, and so I just want to emphasize as I close that community engagement remains. In other words, we just cannot do without community engagement in economic advancement of our communities. And lastly, uh, partnerships are there. Uh, just to break about our MUT values, we have four values, and accountability, integrity, respect, and excellence. The reason why we is all for the benefit of our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you to Professor Nkonki Manjleni um, for the presentation. Um, and there's something I've noticed with this paper. Um, I noted that everybody just spoke. When I saw the program, the small times that they needed to stick to, and 
as I was sitting in, in the audience listening, I thought, okay, there's a flow he's being told your time's up or you've got two minutes or whatever. So I thought I better go with the flow in my um, session as well. And as you can see with this community engagement panel, with the work that's being, everybody is so passionate about what they are doing that the words flowed at a very late. So um, I apologize that we've been sitting for a fair while. These stomachs are beginning to, to grumble a little. Um, and it is for that reason, there's meant to be a panel now. Um, and I'm actually going to forego that question and answer panel. Um, questions, um, hopefully from the online audience, and I will ask the panelists to engage with that um, later, if that's possible. Um, and everybody who's in the audience can talk to the panelists afterwards when um, they are having lunch. I think they've mentioned in their presentations. Um, so I don't think that many questions are really necessary. But there is one thing that I, that I wanted to mention. Um, just listening to everybody today, and um, Dr. Jlopi right in the beginning, right down to our last speaker now, there's something that um, by a number of, of our speakers today, and that was the idea of the and the um, indigenous and no, knowledge that we have um, and it reminded me of something um, that I think is really important and that is that as we lose our to the ancestors we are also losing libraries of wisdom and so therefore it is that not only are we sharing from the academic aspect when we go into communities, but to learn everything that we can from our communities. So thank you everybody for today. Thank you, panel. Thank you, Dr. Muslim. Thank you leaders for sharing your experience. Without wasting any more time, I'll call upon Dr. Masondo, our ceremony. I requested for a song, fortunately, my mentor, my mother, Uma Mugrina, she's not feeling well. She was looking forward to being here. So I'm not that well. Those who know me, I'm a poet. Uh, I like, they like laughing at me about singing. You know, so for us to even start singing now, <laughs> I sing so well, but um, I asked my daughter for music. You don't have, okay. But at this moment, it is a joyous time. And as it is a joyous time, I would love uh, the team they supposed to have done now to remove here, because I will call upon my boss, the school manager, Obuduam. I'm here with School of Education, because we met today. And Buti, would you please come to the fore? To uh, give the awards and the trophies. And thank you for the support and for assisting that this is a success. And the Lord blessed us so much. 
You know, you know, when you pray and the Lord gives you a place, because when I arrived to a wonderful family, I call them the paradise home. Uh, that family, uh, Edgewood. And I want to thank them so much for being here. And the Lord also, the wonderful uh, partnership, uh, and I want to say, hey, Baton, come over. I'm here at uh, UKZN and, and, and partner with UKZN. And they are here and they are part of the corporate. And uh, yeah, it is exciting now, no, sisterly. I think you can see this, sisterly. Oh, yeah. And can you please come over? Eikeboletu. Upudi from Eikeboletu. Because we also call them to social science and all that. They are, uh, uh, the, you know, they work with EE um, uh, thingies, you know. Many people with university and the burial system. How oh, Chris would clever, oh, what's the car? You know, you, you, yeah, you, yeah. Look, you know, you, you can, we are born, we are born a land, we are born a land. I wish, yeah. Yeah, so they have uh, they booth uh, for our recipients today. Uh, I want to say this full day for me, uh, but I want to say from 2005 um, as a, a child of God, as an off for me, community engagement is part of who I am. Uh, I started. Um, an institute I I can. You can, when you Google, you see it on the web. So I have community builders. It's not something that I do now. It is something that we do. My husband is an, is something that we have even when I was a teacher. So wherever, even that last is, is around every year, this is what we do. So when I was nominated, whenever you choose me to, this is what I will do. So when I was told that I have to be a leader for community engagement, that I knew that this has to happen. This is part of who I am. Whenever you know that awards will be part of what will okay. Now, without any further ado, I just want to welcome the DVs of um, agriculture. I think Baba and Science, would you please stand up? Honor for me to, I don't want, you know, to even say come here because I want, it is an honor, Baba. You know, can you please say, uh, stand up, Baba, for everyone to see you? It is a real honor. Honestly speaking, you know, it is a real honor, Baba, to, to see you a DVC among us. You know, thank you very much for honoring us as social science in collaboration with the college of humanities. I am standing here to have you in a midst. Thank you very much, Baba. I love you. You know, because it's not the first time I'll, I'll talk about you. And also, Ikebole to and everyone. And let us now celebrate. It's celebration time. I, celebration time. Awesome. Celebration time. What's what? I have figure boots. Celebration. Let's give it off applause. Again, a big hand of applause. Hey, people have worked. People have worked. You know, it's not taken seriously. 
But today, the people that we are going to honor, they are important people. And when they do work, they don't expect anything. They were, many of them cried and said, no, what award? Me, for what? Let me just start by appreciating, uh, oh, they are here. Start by appreciating uh, our presenters, Ooh, Dr. Cherry and the facilitators, Dr. Cherry Muslim, whom to the fore and receive your certificate of appreciation from the committee, committee that I'm working with, the committee of community engagement at uh, this year. So you'll just come here and you must give into please i think the 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 parcel give a uh, just put them there assist the as, assist pezulu yeah yes okay quickly quickly as a was totally good yes quickly quickly these were donated by Ikebole to a big hand of applause. Wow. My husband, when I said, no, I will ask Ikebole to, to assist us. My husband said to me, they're going all coffins. <laughs> and I said to my husband, it's okay. Community builders who work hard and know that one day they will die, you know, yes. And now we will also say, hey, Dr. Sianda Keswa, thank you very much, doctor, for facilitating. It is normally difficult to ask, especially, you know, all over, especially even here in my school, when you say, please come and come and present, people always say no. So thank you, thank you. And these are young, I believe in empowerment. And thank you, thank you, my child. Thank you, I love you. And you did a great job. Thank you. And uh, my mentor, Umamukri uh, Namshope, my mother, Bandla, being here. And I thank God that we have started a, a, a powerful journey to her. I hope by this moment, when I give over uh, your, your, your thanks, and I just want to thank her for, for being a mother to me and, you know, and whatever. I, I never knew that I was going to, to, to meet her personally, but I met 2013 through my husband and I thank God, I thank God that we will journey through. I, I'm going to be a great uh, a, 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 a poet, slim also, uh, Dr. Slim, wearing size 32 soon. Uh, I, she's not here. And I want to thank also um, Dr. Geraldine for presenting Dr. Geraldine Jagannath. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Imagine, you know, it's so wonderful to see a doctor say, am I going and do a job? As that in practice, every Wednesday she will say, ha ha. And also, you know, doctor, uh, my daughter, doctor, uh, Zondi said, Mom, and I met a son, um, he's, a, he's supposed to be my grandson, but it's, it's a son. Thank you, son. He's doing his master's, teaching his master's, but hey, he is a lion. He's a lion. What a powerful presentation. God bless you. Thank you, son. Thank you. Thank you for the presentations. Um uh Buti Usia Bong and Dombella. You know, when I called and I said to you, <laughs> I love you, my angel. <laughs> I love you.
The makeup your wife must not fight with me. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a person who likes sitting in my office. I'm like, you know, yeah, I, it's a, I've been here, I think, for this is my fourth year. Yeah, but this time, you know, seeing them. So it's so, I don't know, it's humbling. It's humbling. Aim. But I'm so humbled. I'm so humbled because it's very important. I believe that we have to work with the young ones because they are highly gifted. Because it is us who have to push them to the center and look at the knowledge that many a time they know more than us. And you have seen, thank and um, Mr. Sandy Lemguni, baby, thank you very much. Uni, thank you, baby. Thank you, my angel, my baby. I love you, my, my first time. And uh, it was my first. I promised you a lot of things. And indeed, I think the counselor from, um, I spoke to him, I think, day before yesterday. Uh, yeah, Mobeno, working with you and and we'll start a lot of projects make you to, to meet. And um, Professor Angela James. Prof, thank you very much. Slobo uh, Sam. You know, we met 2013. I just loved her. I like smiling. Just, you know, when I smile and we start being friends, you know, <laughs> yeah. And there is a sister of mine uh, who is also online, who was representing Umama Gandhi. Uh, the granddaughter of a uh, uh, doctor, uh, 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 Mami, thank you very much for representing, you know, for the fact that when Uma uh, Makandi said, I'm not well because she did, you just said, My sister, I am here, we will send your certificate. Now we are. Thank you very much, Tandra Sam. Come and your, your certificate. We thank you very much for agreeing with us the golden information about your university. Here, and the counselors also needed to hear about what is happening. At Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'm also going to a uh, moment, uh, honorable uh, leader of mine, my, my school manager that I love so much, that I adore. <laughs> and uh, my brother, you know, that God has uh, given to us as UKZN. You orange, you have brought the light. The color orange is a board. You have brought the power of God in this university. Orange, we know we are going very far. Thank you know, at this moment, we are entering a moment where we are going to give the certificates to people who are in community engagement. So I have an honor, uh, my legal partner, to uh, hand over to you for great women and men foiled for the country and the universe, the models world. Uh, we have Dr. Desri Manikom, who has been the first uh, community engagement leader. I felt uh, she has to be honored because I came after her. And I, if it was not of Dr. Desri Manikom, I wouldn't be standing here. 
able to show me the campus. I was able to look and be able to, to see where, what is what. When I caught COVID-19, she was a woman. Before even I caught it, she was able to say, Kari, you are not well, go. And I discovered that I had COVID. I know my sister, you are looking at me now, and I just very much for uh, being a leader of community engagement and also coming though my term will be ending now, I think I have done what I was called and I'm happy that I have done it. And I just want to say thank you. I, I, I believe and hope when you look at this certificate, you will just, this is my sister and you will always remember me. I remember the community that you worked with and the community that is still here. And as I give you this certificate, we want to say thank you for being anchor and a pillar for community engagement for the School of Social Science at large. In, you know, since you are not here, I just want to blow my kisses. <laughs>
They are doing the work of old people. They are doing the work of old people. The work of old people. Mm, the work of... And he's wearing it that it is an important day. Hmm? In Nazra, where are you? Nazra Tinambo, where are you, my baby? Wow. It's very important to teach our children as young possible so that they can understand what community engagement. They went there for the floods, they were involved. Yesterday we left X o'clock. They came here at DVC around they worked. They worked and and they left smiling seven o'clock in the morning. Before me, they were waking. Two children. That is what I did when I was a teacher. I will say yes when people are in committees and they will say we will do this. I will say behind the I will I have my army. Yes. Only my baby. I won't only say please. He keep nine walk. Nine walk. Ah, respect. You know, the kids, what I like about the children, they don't give, you don't get headache with the children. Because community you to be calm, to enjoy, because it is enjoyable. Thank you, my children. And I also have, we were called by College of Humanities Public Relations, Public Relations, the children. And they said to me, hey, you know, we signed that you guys were involved in the past uh, 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 distributing, we want co to collaborate. And I will talk about that one when that person like taking, now nah, I don't take uh, uh, epilates that don't belong to me, but that is not me. I will never say I did something that I didn't do. So people, Public relations came, they said, we want to collaborate. Let's again, the students were with us, went to schools. And now uh, 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 we had um, Mr. Kwanele Duma. Where's Mr. Kwanele Duma? My son, hey, baby. <laughs> Imagine we had to distribute pads and pads. And I said, mm, some men are strong, hey? Yeah. UK is at any teaching, serious, ne? to show that, yeah, you important. And we had Umisnon Jabulo Nwabe. And to show that now we are going deep. Uh, the Lord blessed uh, 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 an, uh, uh, an agreement and a relationship with a railways. Uh, 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 called me to come and be an MC. And when I will talk about her, that I am in this venture, she said, I will come, I will come. And she came and she brought students. There is Umis Nompumpundo Madala. Where's Fundo? Yes, my very much. Fundo, thank you very much. Look at that beauty. Not beautiful. Yeah? Oh, you. <laughs> Hi, Fundi. It's Ndanam. Kubegega wenzum sebens. Hallelujah. For God, I, I thought I was at church. Hey, here's Lento, man. Yes. Yes. Again, umis. Lusanda, where are you, Lucy? Lucy, Lucy, or oh, is Lusanda is not here? Uh, uh, and we have um, Miss Melissa Siban.
Yes, Banda Melissa. Um, the number two. Thank you very much. So we ling ana nam. Yeah. Uko na minumuto ngeta. Hanu ang fage into en. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And um, Mr. Pilani Kuluse. Yeah, but I'm blowing kisses to you, my son. I'm blowing kisses. Uh, Dr. Gabriel, he is our partner. Usem, which university? Rose University. Nah, yeah, I'm blowing kisses to you, son. Oh, Dr. Sinazo Onela Nomsenge. Now she is not here. Uh, she is busy with field work and kisses to you. Uh, may I get Elen the the goodies for my face? Yeah. And again. And so uh, another member who also is getting certificate of community engagement, uh, she is involved in um, as an ambassador in uh, the tourism um, industry for is Eteguini, and she is also involved in uh, helping students in tourism with um, the. What is this? With uh, their studies in a way, in terms of which uh, they must choose and all that. And she's also, uh, also, you know, uh, help them with issues of internship and all that. Her name is Dr. Mabui Gumede. Dr. Gumede, come and certificate. Tissue, please. She's the one who knows how to sing. She was supposed to sing. <laughs> she sings very well. She likes opera. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Those who know me, they know me. I li like doing all these things, but it's another day. Mm. Thank you. Yes, God bless, God bless. Yes, God bless. And in our class, in our, uh, uh, now we are entering in, uh, in another category. Uh, my, my school manager, our partner, at this moment, I uh, present um, the best, cluster in the School of Social Sciences. Because when I became a cluster leader, I had asked that every cluster must engage in community, that, you know, members indeed must have their own project. But community engagement is also about uniting the cluster. And, you know, when you had, when there's a vision and a mission, as a leader, I believe that implementation, I don't believe in theory without implementation. I uh, just want to say, today I am proud to the best cluster that has excelled in is IPA cluster. Let's give them a big hand of up. I don't know if there's an iPad cluster member who's going to take it. IPad cluster! 
you will see them on TV, you'll see them, you know, you'll hear them on the radio. Wow, 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 wow. I know social change, they also followed and they did their, they, they are doing there. But I part last you excelled. You'll get your own certificate. Uh, we received your names late, put in your hall, in your wall. Yes. Um, now, my leader, our partner, DVC, at this moment, I have an honor as I'm standing here, you know, sitting down. I also sent the names to the dean. They were approved. The, the committee saw also names and I have an honor to award a certain trophies to the following people. You know, as I said, visibility is very important. Yeah, good. But there's a difference between good, excess standing. The people that I'm going to call now they are trophies also. And that these names trophies we set with Umis Neil also. So the trophies I and thank very much to the dean, our school manager, finance uh, uh, manager, who puts FISO, always gracious. Puts FISO, thank you very much, always gracious. You must be so Kessner. I pray God, you know, give you a big, 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 you know, for you to have a big farm, I know you'll always, you know, come all the time to ask for money and you will give me, I know. <laughs> Even before I say I want money, how much do you want? <laughs> yeah, at this moment, I want to say, have an old woman. I call her mom, mother. I don't just go around calling anyone mother. It's me to say to you, you are mother. I say mother because you deserve. I have a mother there. This woman is excelling in community engagement. You see all of us, even the staff, the students, the love, also spirit, the love that you give to people, but also practically to thank who, who, who uh, professor Sidat uh, uh, for nominating. As I said, I will never say I did something that I haven't done. I was not aware. Paula told me, but it in my mind. But when uh, Professor Sidat has told me, I said, write down exactly what uh, Paula said. Uma uh, Hazel. She has even a computer. Yes, she helps children with CVs. She has a, a bank. She has a clothing bank. She, she, she does. So I, I have an honor to give Uma Hazel. She was going to come via a rheumatoid arthritis. She could not come today. I call you mama because you are so respectful. You have, you are such an honorable person. I just want to say of the university, 
I just want to say on behalf of your chance, on behalf of the staff, may you continue having that la community need your love. Can you just show her, her, her plaque and her certificate? Uh, I have the certificates for Umis Tentogos of Wunda. Can you please? And a trophy for him. Mr. Wunda. Mr. Wunda. This for 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 the flowers he was there for all the way from Peter Nangizo, all the way from Peter Marisbeck he was. Oh, Mr. Bunda is my right hand for the School of Social Sciences. When we don't have a leg, I will send an email. Son, we. Have he will go and get students. He helps students also with, you know, whenever there are problems, he will run. You know, it's too tiring. He's the one also for postgrads research. He is doing a lot. Excellence and thank you. Continue. We have broken children out there. Continue breaking people. Ours is to build. Continuum Danam. I have here a cage and trophy of excellence to Miss Dinche Maso. It's not nepotism. Oh, Miss Dinche Masondo. She's the one who recruited the, the students that you saw coming here. She's the one, the certificates that you are getting today, they are done by Dinklem. The excellence that you see here, as I'm standing here, is Sondo. The organization that you see here is because Dinlema Sondo is behind, even in the culture cluster, all the webinars that the certificates, it has been Dinlema Sondo. She has her own community engagement projects that she's running. You know, she has involved her sisters, Ukhoni Pile, they were there. Yeah. Congratulations and continue loving people. My daughter, you cannot go around hating people. You must be honest. It's better for people to hate you for, for stating love unconditionally. What you cannot do, a community builder loves. Yes. Now I have an honor to talk, who are excellent in service. One, I don't know, I have to talk. I don't know what I must do. I need it because this one is, such, is so important. To sit down, not to say I'm, our ones were not important. Is it possible for this yet so that I can, you know, but I won't break it. Ne? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I must adjust the mic, the roaming. And then here, you see me, see the crowd. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, and then mental. Me. They won't see me. Yeah, I want. Oh, they will see. They will see me. Okay. okay. The camera, the cameraman saw something, okay. or this saw something. Uh, my my leader, and the picture was. So he came back and never said anything. That said, 
<laughs> so now, cameraman, we love each other. Oh, from long time ago, you know, Mus. You will like me. Ne? Let's do it now. Ah, la la. Ah, la la. Ah, la la. Ah, la la. And break. Hey, you are too. Are you sure it won't break? What is. <laughs> is it fine? Yes. You know, the people I'm going to mention now. You know, and I think maybe you must come. Oh, you have to be. Hey. You know, my leader, you and the partner, when you dig deep in your pockets, you say God is going to, to enrich the School of Social Science be rich in the name of Jesus. It's not a loss. I want you to who are coming to the fore. These are the heart of the University of Cape, of Cape Town. Oh, I miss my university. The University of KwaZulu Natal. These women are the making this university to be what it is. These women are the ones keeping us as academics to be here. These women are the ones behind our success. These women are the ones who are giving UK that end the greatest name ever. You know, many a time. The best of the best, the outstanding people that are above there, they are normally silenced, says. I'm about to call the giants that make the end. And they must walk the ground. And God says today, no music. Because he wants, because they work in silence. Because whenever they do what we recognize, they do it out of their heart. Because it is their calling. Our partner, just look how beautiful you are. Unfortunately, you are married. You can't take any of that. The first one is my new, my yellow bow. Hey. When we were putting, we put him on the hammer. Got an arm slice, said, We're calling, we're calling my colleagues who long hammer now with me. Colisazul, Colisazul, we're calling. Well, so excellent in service. this woman, how far thank you very much thank you our webinars for years have been a success one behind. Hey, Mfaneleng Juluk, I have to. Now, my leader, as I said, when the money was released, look at the that these women have done. I have so I man. Hey, my mom, 
my monk, mang, 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 mang. Walk the stage, my monk. Do you want me, Lorna? Put who may do want me, get Lorna. Melly, who Melly, 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 my man. Ma, ladies and gentlemen, here is Melissa. You know, I just want to thank the corporate relations. It's also wearing no green. Ute when Usi called him Sholu Uti Black. Because I left Melissa. It was painful. I left. But Umeli Uti Koli, you left me wearing black. I'm telling you, my sister, that I'm wearing green to tell you that now. It is going to be life. Green for life. I'm going to keep it alive. She's also doing a great. Look at what has happened today. Thank you, Sis Meli. My hey. This, this one, hey, it makes me perspire, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh they say dynamite. Ah. Yes. Dino sono lwamina, weste chal testai, ustana lwam. Dino pongolo sana lwam, dino pongolo sana lwam. Dino sana lwamimina alam, dino pongolo sana lwam. Jizo libele gnala, dino pongolo sana lwam. Hey, my Ladies and gentlemen, Sasai, a woman with a golden heart. You know, this young woman, I, I never knew. And she was the first woman to tell me, you must write your opinion. What is that? <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no right opinion pieces. Oh, okay, and I wrote. This is started with this woman. I have four newspaper opinion because of this woman, not even knowing her. Even her. she is the one who is pushing to write opinion pieces. This is the woman you appear. The woman forces us. Where will you find that? This Olivelega, Daddy, here is your daughter. Baba said is not is not well at all. And I said to say, today is the day that you have to bring. The I don't know, Daddy, but we always talk with Sage. All the time we will talk with my baby. All the time. Thank you for listening to me. And I know Daddy is excited. Daddy is there. Is Daddy? And with uh, the 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 has, uh, the helper. There's Daddy. Daddy, just raise. Hi, Daddy. Hi, hi. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Serge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Serge. Uh, thank you. Congratulations, Serge. Great work. Community of UKZN honor you. We love beautiful from social science, but it's every member of UK that you have saved. Uh, hey, I have two women. Mm. Again, I'm starting to pesper. I know you are. I no longer get hungry. Oh, Dr. Pumelele is not going to anymore. I haven't eaten. I tried this muffin, whatever. But I'm perspiring because, you know, 
You can, you know, look at the DVC among us. He is a professor. You know, when you talk about him and what he does, that man, honorable man of love, is in community engagement. I man, you see a person. They don't do things to be seen. They do things for, it is not about me. You know me. It's not about me, I do this. No, it is about us, about saving people. Sure. Father, what can I can say? Yo. Uti, our partner, have an honor to bring to you your wonderful hands. God. Wonderful woman who is a woman of God. Who edged with all her heart. And also our school, we had, we never even saw science. When oh, Dr. Noctula passed away, COVID, she was not well herself, but she was, they represented us. We couldn't go. They don't even belong here. Two months started the bereavement committee. Not even bereavement, I don't know what. At a judge. Before even it was started, this woman started something called a food banner. What by name? Clothing bags. When they go for teaching practice, she gives them to wear suits because they go for teaching practice because she says i don't want to see students looking she gets close she gives them food pass money for this money for the love that she gives when i add she's the one she's not even in, we don't have welcoming she is a welcoming committee herself at Ejud, she's the one who does this. And she does not complain. Something, I don't know, she's just something. I have an ODIV, the Certificate of Excellence, Development Committee at UKZN. And they go all out. As I said, even the dean, the DVC, whomever the school is not, this woman will go. As I said, they went, the two of the COVID, the whole school of social science was not there, but them with Dr. Zagwe to represent the school of social science funeral. Where will you find people like those? of COVID-19. I was very sick, but they, they went. And we, this one needs us to still we remember Usis Noctula. Sis, naya umu no gutula sito. Sis tula sito. In memory, she did not even know Usis Nogole, who was in my class. She didn't know her, went to the funeral. I don't know what to say, but Sandra Sam, on behalf of the School of Social Science, this is our but it's not our thank you place. 
but it is your certificate of excellence, your plug trophy for the work that you have done for them. You have given our university the best. The world sees us as the best university of you. Whenever there's a funeral at a Jude, you Ooh. Jesus Christ. Oh. Ooh. You know, UKZN, I had the MUT spoke about community engagement. Sis was dancing in front. Sis was now dance. You know, sis was MUT, UKZ. Um, you know, uh, and those on, you know, there's no university like UKZN. Um, there's no university any bereavement committee. Nears or no, UKZN, and as you can see, proud this is all Hey, as I said, I'm Ushu Wuti. Even when, even if I think I can die, because you gave that and will be there. Something there on my coffin, and they will give over and whatever to my husband. Hey, oh, you know they will have a service. Where will you find that? Oh, you do gave that then. Yeah, we have something to proud about. Pumelele Tina. Pumelele UKZA. Pumelele Dogwakwe. We are honoring you for your UKZN. Because of you at UKZN, you know, we have something that when we stand before the nations and the world, we, there is humanness it is higher education is known about less you have brought us academics to be an academic we must have humanness we love you so much because of you our families, you know, proud. Even those brothers and sisters who are who, where they, they are and their families, back of you, Siabong, we salute you as the school of sociality. We love you so much. Thanks for the excellence in you. When you, you know, when you say, you know, when you, you apply for a job and you I'm taking this job, don't rely on a committee, rely on yourself. Because when people die, I don't say, I'm not going. <laughs> she goes, fit or no COVID. <laughs> I'm that kind of a person. I will never fail in my life on another person because when I apply, I apply alone. Because my name is Nkele, it's tears. Yes. Uh, now, um, I have 
in this country. A lady that I met, is it a year before last? This year. This lady, when I met her, I saw it. These people, they are just the same. How to finish, don't worry. Uh, <sighs> this lady invited me to an event. I was shocked what I five star hotel for students. And that is why I met a professor, a humble man. And this woman is the founder and director of. I don't know, I say it's, an, it's a project or whatever, is a man of virtue. Mm. Even last week, they were signing whatever, hey, a pledge. I, I studied at UCT till my master's. I went to have never seen someone who were students in residences who has organized events for students that are of high quality i have never i have never when there were no events nothing events that this woman has organized i don't and they are current events current the other one week before last, I was there. I was, it was focusing on femicides. Who topical? A woman with a big heart. A big for students. A big heart. But very strict, like me. I want to call upon her name, the flower. Usis Kamo. Usis Kamo Kumete. The work that you have for your information, I want to say to you today, oh, as a flower, God gave you this name, informing your mother that you are, he knew that you have to look after flowers. You work with children and give them love. Also shape them. Many people think that for you by the young ones is to lie to them. Give them false love. You must be strict. Love. Yes, continue doing that. I love you very much. We love you. As we just want to say thank you for the great work. Thank our children, shaping our father, you know, our future father. Oh, our DVC, Ubaba Umodi, love Vecha. He does because it shapes our congratulations. Let's give her a big hand of applause again. Uh, we have now we have the support staff. When I came into in the School of Social Science, I arrived and I said, no, it's going to be effective. It will not only comprise of uh, academics. So I involved students, I also involved staff, and they have been so effective, effective beyond anything I have ever seen. Umis non tantam kwanazi. Umis non tantam kwanazi have my pillar of strength. Even when it comes to students, 
assisting students when any support silently this woman has ever if i say we need support for students for this call me send me a message dog i have this and this dog this and this and that the staff uh, i had the uh, student jobs in anthropology this is what is happening uh, give me find that let's give a big hand of applause Uh, also, Unil, she's also our treasurer. She was fighting for who said, no, we must have budgets for school, school engagement uh, committee. I even raised the DVC in our meetings that she me. DVC, this is the woman who sent me. And it's because I was sent by my treasurer. Uh, yes, have. <laughs> yes, that we must have finance, and it is true. And we agreed that there must be financial, and we must fundraise. And she has been very instrumental in point that whatever is done, she has supported even the cluster with me as the person uh, and the. The team as the school, Miss Neil, come because finance put Igwe. Because you deal with finance, felt that the trophy won't, won't be something. We felt that hey, it's better for you after here to go and because you deal with finance, the trophy won't help. I put. <laughs> Can you see put you, you see who? You know, we have, a, hey, my, my, you, the boss is grand, eh? You want the boss like that? <laughs> okay, let's give, let's give uh, the lady a big hand of applause. Uh, uh, Boti, partner, the DVC among us. Moment. I have academics. Academics are very, they have a lot of work to do. Um, these ones, the fees, when I looked at the trophies um, on the people that I worked with from November, and also the support and all was given to them, and also the support that and the vision and mission, whether they followed that. In terms of the strategic plan that I gave the dean, I shared with the board and the school at Menko. I want to report to you, sense of the dean, um, that I will present to you staff that excelled in community engagement that were able to follow every step of TGs, the vision, the mission. I want to call Dr. Lungi Le Prudence Zondi to the fore. Dr. Lungi Le Zondi, the strategies was for us to work with rural communities. We wanted to engage rural communities, assisting them with whatever. And um, so it was issues of MOU. That <laughs> is the one who was able to get 100 reusable Heads, give them to where she was able also to go to a rural rural community for over four days alone, close to over five hours for close to four days alone to do what for careers on behalf of UKZN. And now 
she works in the office minister of uh, these things young she always corrects me nana is us exact and culture she says when you start with you know she was not in i'm the one who went they didn't said do whatever you want to fetch her because in the culture cluster the best and i knew without her i was not going to excel to my child the second one is dr geraldine she's getting her stroke she's getting her certificate buddhist i want to report and say most supporting member in the committee i shared about the flood relief she was the first person to bring the food she brought the food she dropped the food i she brought the food even for the head at last unfortunately and she would always call her even yesterday she kept on calling what is happening mom is not well at all let's keep keep her in our prayers and she will always support and as you have also when it comes to uh, what is happening presented and she has represented us and she also wants to use paper for community engagement but i uh, said that uh, it will be done by the school so let's give her a I had another young man needs to be looked after. You have a golden. I want you to watch this young man. God can take me away. I want you to this young man. Dr. Sianda Keso. This young, this young man is gold. This young man, I went with men that I said, all the way from Peter Maris, he was in the relief project. He came to Katomena, not no Katomena is only academic social science to support i went with them not even know his face know him as i said that i read that day i thought he was a student he came with his back oh jesus christ this man booty and our partner this is the man i told you about the bullet he started library areas dvc he called starts libraries in the rural area i said to him son since you are uh, issues of libraries you must go and start library i said i will support you he then ran with the vision of applause At this juncture, I think this went up. I can leave this one. About to finish. Now, Or you still want to stand, right? Or a man's yana, or necessary. Are we about to finish?
Hey, hey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know this moment. I have an own, a real own, to present to you eh, an outstanding tool in the college, the college of humanity in community engagement. This school has done a lot of things. As you have, they distribute food, even to school, clothes. They have their own volunteer. There's a website or whatever. They have the face, a, there's a Facebook. They also have their, um, what is this, a, a new system. Hey, now old. They have their own uh, school newspaper. Hey man, this, this, a, a, a school, they support lecturers that don't have PhDs. Their dean goes out as <laughs> money. One for lecturers without PhDs um, overseas to go and and live. Yes, where will you find a dean like that? Some of them have never even <laughs> bang. It was their first time on Dovela. What a plane. Yes. Hey, they went like, I think it was a year. Fences paid. And there will be, you know, fundraising even for students, bursaries, some of them. Staff is active in community engagement. And they are, they are in, I remember Prof. Angela was involved before even there was, they're involved in environmental activities, environmental clubs. When I, you know, just, I, I used to, when I was there, there was a vegetable garden where the green peppers and small onion and tomatoes. Yeah, I was just like, what's going on here? But that was the beginning of Bethlehem, you know? And this is the best. And they have a lot of, but because of time, I want to say, Dr. Mbongwa, uh, Professor Angela, please come and fetch coffee for the School of Education. The best school engagement in the School of Humanity, in, in the College of Humanities. Can you walk? The school we are proud of you that today us who now have you push them, you got fun. Your dean had to go all over to get funding. They were taken overseas. It was, you know, really environmental, whatever. God bless you. Ah, yeah, 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 my last time, my friend is telling us in the I'm Yes, this one. My 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 school. My. Uh, I want to be honest. I read this thing. 
you know, when you every time look at the University of KwaZulu Natal, all the time you look at the University of KwaZulu Natal and read about communicating the college all the time. And when I wanted to look at this person, I look because I'm a person, as I said, I like our pet because now we have a problem with the church and whatever they there. And I was looking at this college and it is this college, this college. And I said, Lord, an opportunity for me to be able this college one day when we have a venue them and say, Wola, it the link is in door. They have they are doing, they are using the disciplines, the modules, and community engagement. Eh? Now I you, I I just got tired. There is, you know, they are looking at and they I don't know because I'm not a scientist. They look at the mill, they, they, they are testing and they want to, to remove what what are they forgive me, Kaloko Mina. Yeah, they want to, to remove what yeah, at all. Hey, I was looking, they want to remove a, to reduce me there. Whatever, I don't know. Um, you know, they are talking about they are even linked with oh hey man they have training that is linked with gem these people are involved with Hebatum. they work even with water they you you see issues with the floods look at this college since we have the issues of floods here we have issues of floods here now with them now they are looking at how to stop the impact that is that has happened here. Yeah. Going to stop the, the, the impacts in where free state Limpop. They are using those case studies so that it will impact the way it has impacted what case find a college like that. It is just let give the college of Hey, Kwayona, be tunana, and the Kwabi, the Zakikawa, the Zaibi Banjaji, Haida Tumuti, Kaupagame. Hey, now you call it Chiago, a data, Tio data, Akahele, Hele, we do the outstanding college engagement at the University of Kwazulu, the College of Agriculture, Engineering. Hey, the things that they are doing, my God. Hey. <laughs> UNESCO, we are, now we are just talking about UKZN, a KZN. Like that, he's far with his team. But you can understand that Umut, that Umut, Prof, can you please walk? Come, Tata. Can you please walk again? Can you please walk again. Tata, can you please walk again? This man. You know, Tata, Tata, please, my child, that flower. Give me, come, Tata, come, Tata. Flower comes from my office. This one is yours, Tata. In your of in your office, Baba. This is yours, Baba. Ah, oh, man, Baba, I love bless you. I, my leader. This, this, this. Ah, uh, hey, 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 hey. Thank you, thank you, Baba. God bless you. God bless you. I walk. If you lay walk, Babu mood. Now you walk. How humbly courage you have. I, 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 I lay walk, Baba. If they walk, how humble they walk. <laughs> oh man, oh, man, Babu Mood. Says the actor, Hey, 
Are you okay that you are just the man? Then you are just the man. Hey, man, we are left with one. You see? Who? Okay. Because our university is talking about in and community engagement. And charity begins at it's very important to also because we have to look at our leader to encourage those after us. Looking at a uh, Dan, a uh, Mel killed the four because this one, yes, made it. The person that, yes, the person that I am going to give this award to now on behalf of the School of Social Sciences, Humanities, the University of KwaZulu Natal. Um, an outstanding in terms of innovation comment is the my art institute here can you please stand up my art institute come with me institute come with melissa you can come to the stage you see of the DVC of the Nities is awarded for him working leadership in terms of innovation management. He is the one who pushed us that we have to focus Dr. Zagwe is also in your office. Can you please come to the front as uh, the right hand of the, uh, the DVC Institute that is called my art counseling. I want to report that when an apostle, they are also in us. They are working even in Cape Town online to cancel for free and anywhere they are assisting for free. Um, they have been toll free. Oh, yeah. And he has this is vision for a person to start something like this. And it is, it is funded. He has his OG, which focuses on issues of trying to make it a point that vibes issues of indigenous knowledge. And now ensuring that issues of a, a, a the fall. Now, you know, focus on issues of Swahili, age, you know, all those things. And a lot of uh, 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 public lectures was issues of um, uh, uh, community, the, the flood relief uh, projects. Uh, so today we are honoring him as a DVC. Uh, at this, let's give them a big hand of applause. At this moment, when I give this, I want all of us to stand up and I want DVC to also stand and come to the front. Professor Moody to join, uh, yes, to join my leader and Moody. Our, our leader here I has to join them because it, it is exciting when we honor people who are not from 
uh, you can have a top leader in our midst, of, you know. Yes. Or the SRC in our midst. Uh, 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 Siskamo, Siskamo has brought the SRC. Hissi, would you please come to the front, please? Let's give our SRC a big hand of applause. Yes. Give our SRC a big hand of applause. Wow. Yes. No. At this moment, the city of KwaZulu Natal, I started it as the School of Social Science. You see, to say we are powerless, do it. We are. Her call is very important. Give me, my leader, forgive me. Give me, as the School of Social Science, the College of Humanities and the School of the University of KwaZulu Natal. At this moment, uh, I have an honor on behalf of our school in this university. After we have done a lot of investigation in KwaZulu Natal, Gins at home, investigated what is not given to this higher education institute because of anything. We don't have any MO. I want that to be on the record. I have never, we have never been to is what? I even forget the name of the university, MUT. Yeah. But from investigation, I attended a Etegwini municipalities looked at the website. Only university that has the DVC for community engagement. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are DVC. We tried, ne? we tried, he couldn't, yeah. He couldn't come even yesterday who probably been trying. And this is the only you had, the, the only, like, even a director of community engagement, the way they presented it. In other deal cluster leaders, there are no deal in other universities because I remember I was what about a uh, Zululand. Zululand has another uh, portfolio, but with a DVC of community engagement it is a stand alone, a direct engagement. And you also have a Friday. I like the Friday. They have a day associated. You forgot to talk about the Friday. That it made me chill. You know, I just thought of myself, you know, I don't drink, what is that tequila? I don't know what is that, but I drink um, the old type. Yeah, you know, I am. Um, I am here. I will. The UK said, Mamela. Oh, hey, UK said, Mamela. Oh, he will end up. He will end up. Nay, Emmati, where to? Hi, 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 hi. Sends a nibble. Hi, 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 hi. M-U-T, a big hand of us. MUT today is going to receive for an 
higher education institution. Ah. We communicate. You have made us proud. You graduate. A cast is in Sanchal. I a cast. How's an idea? Oh, yes, a cast. Is you know, tap. Come, brothers. It's on. Come, come, brothers. MUT team. Nazoge. Dr. Geraldine. Okay, the last but not the least and saving the best, Dr. Kari Masondo. This is thank you for all that you have done and will, I am sure, as acting community engagement leader. In time, your clear vision, mission, and plan resulted in a multitude of efforts and opportunities, admin staff, and students. We have witnessed, participated in diverse community events, and your selflessity have produced dynamic and very I clearly remember the award ceremony when you began this portfolio and you awarded students including the cleaning staff certificates of recognition you have been actively involved in poverty alleviation the food the flood relief and food bank project the toiletries and sanitary towels to high schools community with the Maat Institute empowerment and mentorship, the initiation of libraries in the rural areas facilitated the active involvement of the different clusters in natural sciences. So today we all such want to acknowledge your excellence and we are very grateful for your vibrant, supportive personality, especially for me. We appreciate your sincere Dr. Khari Masando, please accept this token of creation for your excellence in community engagement. Thank you, Holly. At this Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Masondo. Thank you very much, Dr. Masondo. Awards. 
uh, and it means a lot recognized. I'm going to call upon Professor Modi just on behalf of the executive of UKZ. Please join me. Wow, man. I could speak for the whole year, not the whole day. There's not only the gratitude, but uh, feeling of being on a pedestal. South Africa, but in the world, by the work in the College of Humanities. I wonder how many people knew going on in this college. And I know enough time to tell us the whole story. So where have you been hiding? There are 19 schools in this university each needs somebody to be led we should have the whole university each one of the schools somebody who reports to you that this university's story can be told so much about this university that needs to be told and need to tell the story of a university is, is true community engagement. So I would like on behalf of the executive leadership, on behalf of our vice chancellor, who's hard, people don't see him, but he's working correct a lot of things. And this one of them is the invisibility of the community engagement in this university. When I'm in person, I'm going to shake his hand. It will be my hand on that day. Meet with the executive leadership of the university. I am a special item on the executive management committee about what I've seen today. I decided the beginning to the end and everything that I witnessed makes me I would like to thank everybody who assisted you, everyone who came to this occasion afar. When I saw Dr. Kvinam Shope, I was, she is an honorary doctor of this university and an op open university of the UK. So we are very, very honored Everybody who came here, it appeared to me as if they came as a team. You know, had the introduction of a chapter written as a thesis. They all spoke and they gave us a message that is very clear. And I was taking minutes for today is going to send us because we've learned a lot from speaker worker. It's amazing that we have a wonderful university. The Ministry of Education in this stated it very clearly through his office that they will a city that does not do community engagement. See, you are the leader. And I am coming to your university. So proud of what you're doing and community thing that is just running in my blood. I like here and spent a lot of time telling you about me and why I know community engagement can actually change. It can change degrees. It can make degrees relevant. I'm sure the minister and his office are going in about what happened today and they will use this as they want to happen in this country 
if you want to become, you must answer this question. How education, research, and making a difference? And that difference, is it visible across the oceans? That's how these of the world are. That's how countries of the world are. When they start, they start at home and everyone else follows them and they just want to do the same thing as they were doing. This country, we were colonized. It's we were made to believe that kind of knowledge. There's only one way to define knowledge, to describe it, to analyze it. Unfortunately, lost the line, despite the fact that our colonizers are teaching, please do not let Africa, it's up to you. We colonized you, but please don't let they are the ones who are telling us now to send the people who colonized us. They're going to be very, if we allow colon, the, the colonizers to come back, that is not colonization, it's going to be something worse. And I'm telling every university in this country, pick up, there's so much knowledge that is required so much that is facing the world, it requires the solutions that come from the people where the first human being was there. I don't know where that is. Africa and being on earth is an African and the African came from the world and that was the first human being. Colleagues, I'm, I know none of you is hungry, hungry, but go home and make sure that the College of Humanities is multiplied in this university. Make UKZ and shine, and we will be working with MUT. Thank you so much on behalf of the leadership of the university. Thank you for spending the day with, with us. We know you probably very, have a busy schedule, but you chose to spend this Friday with us. We've reached the end of our program. I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Balungi Lezon, give a vote of thanks on behalf of the School of Social and the Community Engagement Team. Everyone, let me just take this opportunity to observe all the protocol present here in individual space. Um, I'm not going to say much because saying much, I'm spoiling the work that has been done here. I've been asked by my, my boss, Uma Zondo, uh, um, to say thank you will sound little, but getting a one to Ukubonga, only appreciation of your presence comes from um, the bottom of our hearts. Um, I would like to, to thank the Office of the Dean, Mr. and our Dean in her absence for making this day is a success. I also like to thank yes, our students, that supported the Uma Sebens and Abanduana. I know what she meant. She's one person who really believes that you can, you should always um, impart your skills, Kula, because they are our future. Also, thank the, the community engaged being led by Dr. Masondo. Thank you so much. 
and so that this day um, became a success and great leader for not being um, or wanting to micromanage the process. Very few um, did what you have done, Ma. You know, it's at work. And I am thankful to all the community took on the task that were assigned to them and made um, on them. I would like to, to um, from the university, because I mean, I've, I've, I've seen um, quite a number of members from our university. Thank you so much for honor. I also want to also um, thank um, our, which I think we will then be partnering with from MUT and institutions. Thank you so much for coming um, just to model things because sustainability, sustainable development stakeholder collaboration and it is through staying that sustainable development, which is the inherited future generation is 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 achieved all people who came and joined physically actually thank you so much this day would not have been a success walked on stage and received um an award to think uh, for me i did not you know be thinking that i was thinking, but my presence here was mainly to learn from my leaders so thank you so much for making this day that we, we've taken a bit of time, but I think we have all realized. So thank you so much. As you go back home, please. And I believe that community, community engagement would again, you know, gather us in a space on the work that probably started today and in here, inheritance of Africa as a whole, Nihambekash. So we all live, um, I've been reminded that so Kwazulu Aupume Kaya Yile. So Ukuja Ijesh Chalishin Besto Kela Njugote Ama Ama Ashazu Asamgela 